Hey there, you're listening to You Still Going On About That with Rob Israel and Joseph K. You can find us anywhere you could download podcasts. You could also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at YSGOAT. Thanks for listening. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. Are you still going on about that? All right, Joseph. It's February 23rd. Yeah. We have a little bit of cold weather in uh, Texas. Quite, yeah. So you know what that means? Uh, s- snowmageddon. So <laughs> it means everything shuts down. There's no infrastructure to support anything. Uh, houses will explode from pipes and power might be lost. It's, well, uh, it is it is di- dicey. We That is actually one of the topics we're going to cover this evening is the Texas energy grid, which is kind of in a perilous state. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cold. It's like 20. I'm looking at my temperature thing. It's 26 degrees here. Ah, uh, that's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what are we... What are we talking about, Justin? Well, we have uh, we have probably some minor housekeeping stuff, but we're going to talk a little bit about Peacemaker, a uh, great new series on HBO Max. We're going to talk about the, uh, the situation in Ukraine, which is real complicated, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, and of course, if you hear Russia, Trump is involved in that. Uh, we'll talk about the big rollout of Truth Social, which has been going swimmingly. Uh, we're going to talk about ERCOT and Greg Abbott, and uh, Greg's latest uh, attack on trans persons. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, universities and how that kind of pans into that, that right wing smear machine. And then um, we'll finish with uh, one of our favorite, most lovable characters, little uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, Everyone's favorite little murderer. Yeah, it's funny. I call, I call him murder pig on Twitter a lot. And whenever I do that, it, like no one has any trouble figuring out who I'm talking well, about. It, 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 I, I want to, I don't want to correct you, but it's murder hog. Murder hog. <laughs> yeah, it's a, he's a hog. He's not a pig. A pig's a cop. Yeah, all right. All right. He's a hog. You gotta, you gotta get it correct. I'm going to send you though. Uh, I just want to make sure we're on the yeah, same yeah. page because we have a order to these things. And I know we're going to talk about, um, let's see. Hold on. Yeah, I, I think uh, I may have read the original order. Yeah, yeah. Sort of, uh, okay, no worries. We're going to talk about Peacemaker first, and then we're going to talk about Abbott. And then we're going to talk about, you know, probably the University of Rittenhouse because it kind of fits into that. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to talk about the freaking, the rest of the episode will be about uh, Ukraine and yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a big Trump one. with social because, you know, Trump's tied to Putin and will always be, no matter oh, what. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting characters on the internet will claim. Uh, so, I do have a big announcement, personal. That's, that's but right. Not yet, not yet. I'm going to save it. I want to talk about it before Peacemaker because it has nothing to do with Peacemaker. All right. Let's talk about, we'll talk about Peacemaker. Um. What is that, Joseph? Peacemaker. I'm gonna, and before we, we go, I'm gonna. Uh, my microphone got wonky today, so my, I'm, I'm hoping my voice is coming through okay. But if it's a little uh, less than optimal, it's it's a mic issue I'm working on currently. Um, it does sound like you are talking into a Folgers can uh, in a bathroom in the basement. Um, I'm kidding. You actually don't sound that bad. It's probably some of my best work was done through a Folgers can in a, in a bathroom in a basement. But, <laughs> but Pe- Peacemaker is a great show. Now, I, I did not watch Peacemaker until recently. You had been watching it. You kept telling me it's a great show. You got to check it out. And I just kept putting it on the back burner. I had, I like, I'm like, I'm too busy watching Blind Love on Netflix. <laughs> I don't have time for your childish shows. Uh, your TV was running a cheaters marathon, and I was just the circle, whatever that shit on Netflix is. Yeah, know, yeah. Awful, like you know, you're like, I'm not time for your like, fantastical VH. men shooting other fantastical <laughs> men. 18 VHS tapes of the Morton Downey Jr. show. I was trying to get through. Uh, <laughs> <it> was... <laughs> you got to start from the beginning, or the end won't make any sense. 
Right, right. Well, okay. So uh, anyway, I, I had nothing against Peace Drinker. I loved the the. You know who probably like the Morton Downey Jr. show. Um, probably Peacemaker's dad. Probably. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like, and he took that shit seriously. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a continuation of Suicide Squad. I think it takes place like four months or four weeks or something after. It takes, but yeah. So I mean, did you see the James Gunn Suicide Squad? Movie? Yes, and I loved that. I thought it was okay. great. So Peacemaker's in it. He's kind of like just a dick. You kind of get like the idea of his personality, but there's so many other characters in it that he. he first of all, this show was announced as they were making the movie. They said yes. they were working on this, and they worked on it like immediately afterwards um and it was and had james gunn involved yep but i don't know if he directed every episode but i know he wrote every episode he directed like six out of the eight episodes well supposedly Um, next season he's directing everything yeah okay Um, i don't know when it's gonna come out the show is awesome it definitely like his characters definitely improved in the in the show yes um I mean, again, it's like, you know, you got Harley Quinn there, you got King Shark, you had the Rat Catcher, you also mm-hmm. had um, Idris Elba's character, what was it, Bloodsport? Bloodsport. Kind of like, then you had Agent Fl- Flag, I think his name is. And Rick Flag, yeah. The polka Dot Man, so there was a lot of crazy characters and stuff in it, so he definitely, like, he he's just kind of like a, it's John Cena playing an asshole. Yeah. But, like, the show was awesome it just really did a more in-depth on this character there's definitely a lot more so in the movie i mean it's funny because you watch the movie but if you read the news there's a peacemaker show he gets you think he gets killed he gets shot in the like close to the throat uh right. by blood sport well blood sport was the hero in this because peacemaker was literally gonna throw the mission or do, uh, do what uh what's her face waller wanted yeah 100%. amanda waller Amanda Waller, like he was, you know, his whole thing is like, he will do anything to protect peace. It, it'll literally kill a village of innocent people, which he kind of does by accident. They all do. Right. Which, <laughs> that's a big gag on Suicide Squad. Movie. Yeah. Um, but he ended up living. It's kind of funny because in the show and everything, they don't make any, like, there's no, is there anything that says like he has like any super soldier serum in him or something? Or, no. Like, I mean, he's a, very easy you know he's john cena so he looks like a wrestler and everything and you just accept the fact that he's just like really good at combat and he's very strong but there's still like a level of super soldierness in him that makes it seem like you know like like he may heal a little quicker maybe yeah he's, like he can handle like falling gig like like a couple of oh. floors without dying like, I feel like they just didn't, they're going to maybe explain it more in the second season. Yeah, I got the feeling, like, I, I went into it kind of thinking, like, oh, clearly he has superpowers. But then the more the show dragged on, the the less I thought that, because he was often, I mean, he was easily cut, he was easily hurt. Um, it, when he was, like, escaping from that apartment complex, he was, like, jumping from balcony to balcony. Those were like terribly big jumps, and he was getting hurt. Well, with each the funny time. thing is, like, you know, in the movies, Captain America, they give him like an unspecified superhero ness. Like, you don't know, they right. make him so much stronger than he actually is in the comic. In the comic, Peacemaker in the show is more like the Captain America in the comic. The Captain America oh, yeah. can kick ass and do all kinds of things, but he ain't jumping like. 40 stories and landing on his shield without right, right. splat in the com- like they made him out to be like they made they like increased his power in the co- in the movies it's almost hard to gauge what his powers are sure so I, i'm just wondering if peacemaker just has been altered by his dad in any way you know his dad provided him those like helmets and everything and uh, I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah, so, right. But the show's awesome. It's kind of funny though. I have one little comment. So people are, like talk about how great the show is. Yeah. And everything, and it is. And now uh, it's better than Marvel stuff, or it's more daring. Like it's more daring yeah. than Boba Fett. But like, I'm sorry, there's a big difference. This is a rated R show. Yeah. It, I mean, yes. we're watching this as adults. They say the f bomb like a thousand times. There's some gratuitous sex scenes. Yeah. This gory as fuck. There's like they have no limitation at all on that show. 
like there was this guy on uh, Twitter. Oh, I forgot it. Uh, and he tweeted. I think I gotta find his name. Yeah. yeah. He tweeted something about how his one disappointment of Book of Boba Fett was is that there wasn't a scene where like Boba Fett blows up a hut and rains and like like he's like the payoff of like seeing those two huts. Right, right. We should have gotten a scene where Boba Fett blows them up and it just rains hut <laughs> right. like everywhere. Or you see Swapping. a detached they, hot face. Well, yeah, it wouldn't have to be bloody. It just clumps raining down on them like a marshmallow man. Or something. <laughs> and the people are like, that will never happen on Disney Plus, right? But it could happen on Peacemaker. Yeah, well, yeah. You yeah, gotta they, see that in that one scene. Spoilers, we're gonna spoil. It was Peacemaker. real rowdy and raunchy and um, it was a lot of fun, but you're right. I would not let my kid watch it you know i mean it's, oh, it's I definitely not for i made for, the mistake of letting him watch it i did not let him watch the first two episodes okay i was now, gonna say like, now we, this yeah i was afraid i watched every episode he he accidentally watched one with us don't even ask and i was like and he and i was like listen i'm gonna watch him first before you see him because yeah, yeah. he never saw the first two which is kind of funny i mean mate no i don't think he has hbo max on his ipad so it doesn't matter yeah. um but because there is like, like just a really gratuitous sex scene of John Cena just like banging this bartender that has yeah. been revealed to be like a, a butterfly later. Right. But it, it's just, I mean, it's only like 10 seconds, but it's just like too much. Like, I'm like, no. It's a lot. And I was talking to Leah and my wife about this and she's like, oh, but it's okay for me to watch violence. And it's like, listen, you know what? The violence is like, he knows it's not real. He knows that it's not like, like, I talked to him about it. He knows that it's yeah. like these are like superheroes or super, you know, sci-fi, and it's like it's unrealistic. It's ridiculous. I mean, like, is it gratuitous amount? Yes, of course it is. It's ridiculous. Right. But, but the big difference is, I mean, he's eleven. Listen, I watched RoboCop when I was like ten. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. He's gonna. He, he needs to be fucked up like me. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, but. You know, I, I don't want to have to explain to him right now yeah. what that scene was, why John Cena was naked railing. Or in the second episode, he's in bed with this woman who's topless. Yeah. But he's in bed with this woman and vigilante's there too. Right, right. Really, it's a fun, it's a weird scene. It just comes it out is. of nowhere. It's like the last scene in the episode, all of a sudden, it's like the two of them, like, they had a three way. And right. I'm like, I didn't want to have to explain that. I don't yeah. want to have to do that right now. He's only 11. I don't think these are, and it's, this is not sex ed. This, I mean, like, sex ed is like, hey, this is this and this is that. Not, this is John Cena banging right. a flashy bartender. Or this is John Cena having a three-way with vigilante and this dumb and this woman. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing is that, like, because I, I agree with the greater point that, like, violence is definitely more problematic than sex, you know, in, in a global scale. But like when you're talking about kids, it's like violence is something that's, like you said, it, it's clearly cartoonish. The, the kid is not going to take a machine gun into, I mean, like, it's just. It's I like the, now the sex scene was like in the movie Eternals, where there yeah. was like just generic sex scene in movie where it's mm -hmm. just like, uh, like whatever it's not i don't care i would have let that played we watched the eternals and i don't even think he even cared it didn't like but it, if, he, if it was the eternals that i watched i'm surprised he stayed awake long enough to, to catch the sex <laughs> <movie. laughs> that movie was eternally long it was I, I look i love a lot of i did not like the eternals um i think the the material the source of material no, that's the problem no one gives a i don't care what anyone says no one gives a fuck about the Maternals comic. Yeah. Every time Marvel, they put them out and they put out these comics every like five or ten years, they reboot the Maternals. And every five or ten years, that comic ends after like ten issues. No one gives a shit. Yeah, it looks so boring. Um, but, like, but Peacemaker's not boring. And no. it's, it's a great show. It's like a perfect mix of funny and serious and it like works equally well as a comedy and as a legitimate kind of superhero action show. And it's got like a really big heart, you know, I mean, you can feel good about watching it because like, you know, the characters kind of earn their- Yeah, though, what's her, Amanda Waller's daughter is awesome. That character's yep. great. 
Yeah. Um, oh, I remember I was like on something and some guy wrote that the show was too woke. And I said, uh, how is this show woke? Well, I'm like, are you, so let me guess you, were you upset about the, the Nazis getting killed? Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> it, it does, it does, I mean, like, look, the Nazis are the bad guys, that is true. Um, As they should be. And there's a couple scenes, yeah, right? And I, look, I, I liked this about the show, but there's a couple scenes where, um, where they talk overtly about racism and about, you know, how, like, the peacekeeper needs to remember <laughs> the janitors like telling the peacekeeper he needs to kill more white people to like balance out like the, the, his body count and stuff. He's like, you seem to be killing like you know people of color too often. Um, it was it, I thought it was it had some woke moments, I guess if you want to call it that. But like, I don't know. I mean, it? what it does is it does a good job of like, well, like his character is like. They try to imply that they make jokes about him saying like he's racist or he right. like goes after like black like he has this past supposedly but I'm sure a lot of it has to do with his dad uh, influence from his dad right like so Peacemaker they don't really go into too much but like in Suicide Squad he's in Bellevue is that it no is it the prison there's a prison. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Econ- what's his name? Economos? Economos. Um, goes back oh, to work in, yes. in Del Reeve. Um, is it Del Reeve? It's in Louisiana and it does have kind of a Cajun name. It's like we have to like, be more prepared for this. You know, you need to know. You, you need <laughs> the to know prison, all the, the prison name. You need to know the prison name. You need to it's know. It's not like, Delacroix, it's, but it's something like that. Well, whatever. He's in that prison. He gets let out, uh, basically part of the same deal the other Suicide Squad members have. Right. Uh, supposedly, he still has that chip in his head or his neck. Yes. Or that. They can blow him up if he gets out of hand, which they do threaten him early in the season. Right. Um, but so supposedly he went to jail for like four years and you don't really know what it was, but it was for killing. And I think it might have sure we'll, we'll probably talk about it next season i'm sure it had something to do with like that's why the joke is he's deemed as like a racist character yeah you know, i don't think he is i think he's just had a shitty upbringing i think he wants to he he's kind of like i don't think he cares at all I mean, he's kind of like a bully and like kind of comes off like a bully and a douchebag yeah but i think he's also like I don't know if he's good natured. It's just like he he's just, he's a dude. Like he's a dude bro guy. Like right. he's like whatever. He doesn't care. Like it, his dad is one that's racist. And I think by by being in any reference to his dad, he is deemed in the public as like a racist. But I don't yeah, think yeah. his character is a racist. Like they have this joke in the beginning when something with vigilante he calls him out for being a racist and. He's like, fine, I'll kill more, I'll kill more white people if you want. You know, like, it's just like really stupid. Like, it's dumb, but it's just like funny. Like, I don't think he's, or like in the end of the show, uh, I mean, again, spoilers, like, uh, what's the woman's name of Walter's daughter? Um, Abadayu, I think is her, they, they go, call her by her last name. And I want to say it's Abadayu. I'm going to look up peacemaker so i have all these things and i'm prepared to talk about it <laughs> but she said well basically there's these aliens the butterfly mm-hmm. and and they try to convince peacemaker to uh save their food source and it teleport they're trying to save help save the world i don't believe they were i think they just told him that to like get him to be sympathetic so they could survive because if he killed the cow they're doomed they need yeah. that food source i don't believe that i i mean i think that in the end they probably were going had every intention of taking over the earth i don't think they were just there to like be like oh we'll just take over some people and just get into the institutions of all power so we could save you guys yeah you know if you watch the show we are literally unrelentlessly taking over people and injecting butterflies in their heads and turning them into us well, there is that one scene because I, I had originally said that the alien, the, the goth alien, is the one that that is kind of the leader. I was like, you know, that that alien kind of presents a compelling argument that maybe you should just go along with them. But like, literally, the episode before. 
the goth alien led like 60 of the the, the other aliens in and killed everyone in the prison. Cops, and took prisoners. Them over. Yeah. Right. So like what why do they need to do that? I mean, in theory, they only need to take over like 10 people. They only need yeah. to take over like 10 influential people on Earth. And that would change the course of humanity right there. That's it. Yeah. No, they have every intent, they had every intention of taking over the planet. I I'd watch the show. I saw it. Like you said, yeah, they went into that prison and they unrelentlessly yeah. killed everyone, everyone in there and took them over. It's interesting when they take them over because they still like retain their like memories and their personalities, but it's not them anymore. That person's dead. Right. That person's dead. And uh, you know, spoilers, we find out uh Clemson Mern, um, who's the like leader, the leader yeah. of the group. You find out later on that he's a butterfly, but he's like a uh, uh, what's this? Yeah. He's like a dissident. He's yeah, like dissident. a and he's ha- and well, the, there's a comment made by Peacemaker or something early in the season when you meet Clemson Mer, and, you, and he's like basically like this guy's like one of the worst people on the planet. Like he's evil. This guy, yeah, and he's not acting like himself anymore. Like he just he changed, and it's like no, that butterfly took him over. And the joke is maybe the earth's better because this guy is right. not a butterfly. I mean, like, I mean, if they're just going to take over like psychopaths and stuff like that, yeah, sure. Maybe I would, but they're just unrelentlessly taking over anyone they can. I don't believe hundred percent they were there to save the planet. I think they were there to like live there and, and yeah. basically Take, I don't know. Would well, they take over slowly? Yeah. I think the thing was that the towards the end when the goth alien said to Peacemaker, uh, it was like, look, we're, we're the same. And Peacemaker, Peacemaker's ethos used to be uh, world peace at any cost, no matter how many people I have to kill. You know, and that, that was kind of like the joke. But then he didn't want to, he changes that in the show and he doesn't yeah. really want to kill anyone or like he doesn't want to kill and just anyone like yeah. they, like there's a scene where well there's like the funny there's like the senator and his family i don't know the jokes about the kid is so oh funny. yeah there's really the funny. daughter is so fucking funny <laughs> it's, like, this is some there's just some lines in that show that are so goddamn funny and yeah. um he's like he won't do it it's like he's different like whatever happened to him i mean he's like forever guilty he's this flashbacks of him killing Flag from the movie. Yeah. Um, there's, and then you see flashbacks of him killing his brother. Uh, in right. The show and find Accidentally, out. yeah. That, well, not accidentally in his part, but like his father would basically have these pit fights, pit bull fights, but he'd yeah. use his sons to beat the shit out of each other and, and they would take bets. And Peacemaker hit his older brother too hard and gave him a seizure and he died. Yeah. Or, of course, some kind of brain damage. Right, right. Uh, it made me think of the Arrested Development. Uh, do you remember the boy fight videos? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that episode where you find out the dad put out a series of videos called <laughs> Boy Fights where you just tape Michael and Joe fighting and then like Baby Buster in the background. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, so there's a conversation in and she's like, you know, oh, is this some like libertarian bullshit? Like, you know, we got to be free and be able to do whatever we want. And, uh, you know, it could, he probably would say he's a libertarian just because it's like sure. stupid sounding, but I don't think he is one. I think he's like, uh, he's a character that's clearly growing. I mean, he's still yes. a relentless murderer, but he's still violent. He's still... Uh, all the, don't worry, he's not, you know, he may be a little more woke in the show, but don't worry, because he's still incredibly violent, incredibly rude, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> all those aspects are there, but he might respect pronouns a little better. In his <laughs> I think it's weird. I think the Peacemaker character, he's like real broken. You know, obviously he had a, a real shitty childhood and he's real broken and he just wants people to like him, you know, and... and yeah, he, yeah, he may act like he doesn't, but he does. Yeah, when he's around his dad, he realizes that he said something like uh, something 
horrible that happened to someone and his dad started laughing and then he kind of sees his dad reaction and he kind of so he keeps it saying horrible things yes. so that his dad and it's like he just wants to please his dad right just wants to please his dad there's stuff about his dad though he says like uh which is implied that like he also might be like uh they imply that he's bisexual uh, yeah yeah uh or gender fluid not gender fluid uh i don't know is that the term Um, no not gender fluid i mean he's he's like obviously um although he does say something once he's like the the 80s hair metal was like great because that's when men what did he say he said something like the men dressed up like women but they were like incredibly like i explained that men men weren't afraid to be men because they dressed like women or something like it was like why i said to it's kind of funny like roger my son got really into like motley crew and all these bands and i said to him i always found it really funny and something i even realized when i was younger i i just always found these bands ironic and the people that liked them ironic because you would see these dudes and they're wearing makeup and they're yep. making so like weirdly feminine, but at the same time not. And the joke was these dudes were all incredibly homophobic. And yeah. the music at the time was incredibly homophobic. But yep. these guys were like practically like 80% there on the way to drag. Yeah, and real close. I said it's the most odd. I always found it to be the most confusing, weirdest message that this music would convey. Like all these bands, like the cock, I call them like cock rock bands. Yeah, yeah. Which is all the bands that like Peacemaker likes, like uh, what's a uh, yeah. one they always talk about? Uh, well, Hanoi Rocks. Is Hanoi the Rocks. That's yeah. the guy, the drummer who was killed by Vince Neil, right? Yeah, right. Razzle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Razzle. What a great name. <laughs> I'm like Razzle Khan. Right. Yeah. He's gonna go to jail for a long time. For one of my favorite rappers. Big, <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite new rappers, Razzle Khan. So who's gonna go to jail for? Probably like 20 years. Crypto <laughs> laundering. Yeah. Not as cool as uh, killing a drummer and a, ba- and a fellow no. band. Like I'm Vince waiting Neal. for the Netflix inventing RazzleCon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We were going to talk about inventing Anna. I finished it. but uh, Oh, yeah. That was a great show. <laughs> that was great. Um, I guess we could talk about that for a bit later. Maybe yeah. if we're, if we're not like exhausted <laughs> from another shit we're going to talk about. Maybe we'll end the episode on <laughs> finishing up inventing anna which is a net, great netflix show um so well they make a joke too like you know in prison he well they said he, he says like he hasn't had sex with a woman in four years he wanted to like have sex with what's her name hardcore Hard, hardcore hardcore that yeah that's, that's a, a james uh, gunn's like uh fiance or something yeah yeah in real life yeah um hollywood nepotism I yeah <laughs> well she was you know it's funny because she was really good and i was and like really i've never because i mean she was hardcore like, not hardcore hardcore oh okay you know i said it sounds like they're saying hardcore well i i was like i'm surprised i haven't seen her in anything because she was like a good actress well, she's and she in was suicide like, squad and also the movie she was you know well, what's prior to that she was in like not she was in like a vhs straight to vhs movie called like zombie strippers or something oh weird yeah uh, uh steve steve, steve aggie Iggy, or his name? that guy's great that guy's hysterical yeah. he's from like uh sarah silverman show okay on that. and then yes. Michael Jane, like the joke was they were like they were husbands yeah. <laughs> it was like her giant she right. her giant gay best friends uh he was on like superstore he's just one of these people who's been popping up for years on things right. this guy's really funny this is great he's great at it. the whole dye beard thing's really funny yeah the whole revelation in that was dye and the fact was that peacemaker was the only one that noticed right yeah but going back he says he hasn't had sex in four years but then he he corrects himself and he goes well with women yeah yeah it's a- <laughs> and like his father calls him out in the in the last up in the last second to last episode when his dad is in his full clan iron man outfit yeah. um he calls him out for being a sinner for laying uh basically being yeah. gay or whatever just in general everything and just being a all the things that his dad hates and it is interesting it, it's not uh it, that his character falls into that uh it, it's touched on i find that interesting there is that fucking weird scene in the second episode where all of a sudden yeah with uh her, vigilante 
that guy's <laughs> life and vigilante. I yeah. love that vigilante does not take his mask off. Right. It's really funny. That guy, that character is so funny and so weird. Like people will compare him to Deadpool. And yeah, yeah. he has like a his voice, a little bit of Deadpoolish vibe. Yeah, sure. His character, the costume looks almost exactly the way it does in the in the uh, show. Definitely a Deadpool touch to it. I don't remember the character using a sword. The character is very different from the comic. I always say yeah. this. No one cares. Right. It, no, no. I guarantee you, I'm sure there's some fans of Vigilante who are like, that's not him. No one gives a shit. This was a character. This was a D- D- DC had this character for years. Um, and the joke was he was always kind of just like a Punisher ripoff. Yeah. Okay. It was like Adrian Chase character is totally different they may come out to be like his wife was killed by the mob or something it's like very oh, serious origin yeah yeah uh i always liked his costume though i like the visor the red visor it's kind of a cool look and they kind of preserve that in it but his character like people like i said they were comparing the deadpool and everything but i said like no nah, deadpool like makes jokes like he is funny he tries to be funny. He knows right. he's funny. Vigilante this guy is like so oblivious to everything that's going on. Yeah. That's what makes him funny. Like we're like we're laughing with Deadpool. We're kind of laughing at this character. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we don't hate this character, but we're kind of laughing at him. The guy is just bizarre. Like the best is that scene with the senator. Oh, when, that <laughs> scene is so fucking funny. When Peacemaker is tied to the chair. And then he yeah. had, and, he's, and the senator character, who's really a butterfly, is going to torture vigilante. And Peacemaker's like, "I don't care. You do it. You do whatever you have to do. That will never. I will never tell you." And it's like right, right. vigilante's like, "What the fuck, man?" <laughs> and he's like cutting his toe off, and it's like the funniest scene. And vigilante's just like, I mean, Peacemaker's like. Yeah, you do you do whatever you want. I don't <laughs> care. I'm not gonna tell you anything. It's like the dynamic is hysterical. It's like the butterfly is like we'd hope that his humanity he right. would <laughs> feel bad and want to protect vigilante. Um, but when he takes his mask off and he's just contorting it because he doesn't want right. to pick <laughs> up on facial recognition, and he's just like and he's like just making all kinds. <laughs> That is really funny. Did you hear that he was recast? Like, the character was actually recasted. It was a different actor. I don't know. Yeah. So supposedly, like halfway filming, I don't know what happened. Huh. I don't know if it was like some weird shit. This act, it was a totally different actor who was playing vigilante. That's why there's a lot of scenes where you see oh, he weird. a conversation. He's having that conversation off camera. Uh, with like so it's like they had to like oh. shoot it later or edit it in yeah supposedly it was digitally edited in kind of similar to that movie that zach schneider movie yeah yeah where, where they, they added uh, Tig- 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 right? yeah. place of uh that that creep uh, the, the, the <laughs> chris crepilla yeah. chris delilla chris crepilla <laughs> yeah yeah um uh, uh, kind of I, I don't know i don't think that's why this guy right removed but i mean he was edited in so it's pretty crazy that he's actually this like the second choice because he's he's really good on the show he's great he's really good i mean and it's just like insane like so when they're fighting the dad uh in the seventh episode with his like clansman guys yeah he throws a grenade and just kind of sits there and it's like you know dude you're gonna like get right. hurt like, why would you not run a little bit it's like the most in craziest thing and uh you see him like driving and it's like his costume is just ripped apart like clearly he's got like shrapnel like yeah the end of the, the series like eight in the season when he goes to the hospital too he wait he's healed right and i was like watching our son i'm like telling him like you don't know how high up he was he just sees like oh i'm feeling good jumps out the window and i'm like i'm like you don't hear a thud you know he could have it could have been like five stories up yeah he just jumps out because he doesn't want to be caught he doesn't want anyone to know it's him he wants to like make sure that no one knows who he is or anything because you know he he's like um more 
unrelently, unrelentless killer. And yeah, he has like no conscience. He has no, no, I think he has like, there's something missing in him. Like, right. like when Peacemaker doesn't want to kill the kids, Vigilante comes in and he's like, I got this. And he takes the he gun. He just starts popping him. him. Yeah. And he just, he has no issue killing him. It's like, whatever. Um, I don't know. I thought it was a really good show, but let's talk about the dad real quick. So yeah. We talked about this before. The dad never. Okay, so you first meet him and you find out dad's just is like old racist asshole. He right. His dad in the first episode. Um, his dad has like a Alex Jones type show on the background, which is just really funny. Even and it's, joke of, it's just a middle class suburban home, you know. Yeah, just like a yeah, it's like just a. And then he, but then you find out the dad's the one that gives him all the weapons, his helmets. Each one of his helmets does like different things. Um, they go into this like pocket dimension and he's in this giant warehouse and the dad has like all these technologies and you see the red dragon costume in the background yeah. and you're just like, what? And then later on as you want, at first you're like, I don't know, maybe he's like really smart. Who the fuck knows? He has like connections. There's like, no- on the show, yeah. you're like, this guy's just a dumb shit kicking right redneck racist asshole. They show that footage of like the flashback when he's got the mullet and he has his two sons. Like, yeah, there's no evidence that this guy is bright at all. None. Like, there's no, you can't even say, like, oh, like he would be this racist who's like super intelligent. So he uses like history to like contort and everything to like, well, actually, you know, like he's some like (laughs) fucking Ben Shapiro asshole or something. Like, uh no this guy is just like he sounds like an ignorant fuck he's like a racist piece of shit he's a homophobic piece of shit he's like an anti-semitic the best was when he calls that woman before she gets turned into a butterfly he calls her like lucy Liu, yeah. and she's like she's been calling him different white people and yeah like, like, just fuck. random white names like yeah, well, she's like bringing a point. Like, I don't look like her. Fuck you. I'm gonna pick out some white people that look like nothing like you. Yeah. Um, he he was an interesting character. I mean, like in a lot of ways, he was just a character. But there, you're right. The one weird part was that like he was he was like a weird racist Tony Stark, but he wasn't. He's not Tony wealthy. Stark. Though. It's yeah. like someone was, had to. You're going to find out in second season that his dad was provided all this stuff. Right. And they were just given instructions on what to do with it. No fucking way did this guy create a pocket dimension. No fucking way did his dumbass minions that he had, his racist minions, know what no. the hell they're doing either. They were given this technology. He learned how he used it. And he had, and maybe he was provided stuff and was able to create helmets or whatever. But no fucking way did he invent this shit. No. I just think you're going to find out that his dad was like, like this guy in a creating a pocket dimension and some like racist it's reason. It's crazy. No way that happened. No way. I, they get a like, and listen, if they don't explain it, I mean. Well, I think that's it. They either have to never explain it at all, and that's fine. Or yeah, they he's have dead to. already. I mean, he's definitely Sean Pat. This is name Sean Patrick's the character. Uh, I think so. Name? Yeah, the guy from Terminator Two. He's been in a ton of stuff. That guy's great, and he's really good in this. Um, Robert Patrick. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. Robert he, made, Patrick. he was made famous for the T one thousand character. Yep. He was on um, like the last two seasons of the original X Files round yes. too. Yeah. yeah. With Z- with Zena, right? Um. No, I think. She was on it, but it was um, Annabelle Gish, I think, or... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, well, was... Zia was on it, but it was, it was some other actress. So Peacemaker kills him, whatever, and he haunts him later on. I have a feeling that he'll be haunting him like a weird... Yeah. Kind of like a weird Dexter's dad type thing, you know? Yeah. They set it up like so the that he could be return. He's just going <laughs> to haunt him. But no <laughs> fucking way this motherfucker created any of this stuff. Well, they would, did. You're gonna find out that some sinister force gave it to him because he's an evil piece of shit, and they're probably you're gonna find out like he was given this technology. Well, an interesting theory that you told me about that I think makes a lot of sense is that the neighbor is really Batmite. 
Well, it's not my theory. I found it out there. I'm sure that wasn't, it's been a theory going around. So there's this weird old man that lives next door, mm-hmm. as far as we know, is the neighbor of um, the Robert dad. Patrick's character or Augie Smith, the white dragon. Yeah. Um, and he's just a, like a nosy neighbor and they're like, fuck you. And he's like, fuck you. But like every time you see him, he goes on these weird rants yeah. about Batman. Okay, yeah. I was a creature of night. Batman doesn't kill, and then it's really funny because then like Peacemaker's like calls out the the obvious flaw about like how yeah. Batman wants the Joker live. It's like you know you pop that motherfucker. Right. It, Batman's now responsible for like thousands of people dying because he yeah. will not kill the Joker. How many or people the other dying? or the other bad guys? You know, like. They get out, they have to fight. I mean, that obviously it's all fun and games. I mean, there's right. DC comics and DC, it's great to let DC is kind of cool with John Cena, you know, Peacemaker just trashing. And, and throughout the series, there's all these really funny like references to like ridiculous, <laughs> old ridiculous characters. Or then there later on, the thing about Green Arrow being a furry, I mean, the horse yeah. and has a big open asshole. I mean, it was, it was like the most ridiculous thing. But then yeah. like Steve Aggie's character is like, oh, that is true. I've heard that. Yeah. Like, confirming. Or that Aquaman fuck his fish and like yeah. matter eating lad, doll man. Like, all these matter eating lad went like, to a Wendy's or something. Like, yeah. Like Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's her face? Uh, Debayo is like, None of this shit's true. You're lying. You make this shit up. Yeah. Um, He's like, oh, so Facebook's been lying to me all these years. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Like, it's like funny because, like I said, yeah, he's like a dumb redneck peacemaker. That's why. It's, but his character, I think, is like he can learn a bit. You know, yeah. or will learn a bit, but he'll still be an asshole. Well, he's, um, that's why he works well with that Abadayo character is because he he wants to be liked, he wants to be loved, and if you put him around good people, he'll he'll become a good person. You know, I mean, it's is this the uh, so called theory that people have about Joe Rogan, which I don't think is true. They say hmm. that like, oh, if you just get people on that are good, Joe Rogan will agree with them. And I'm like, nah, I don't believe yeah, that. I doubt it. I don't. No, think so. I don't think so. Only, only people with bad agendas going to work. I'm sorry. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to season two of Peacemaker. I really really liked it. It was but we uh, yeah yeah. But one thing is the rumor going around is that oh, that yeah, old yeah. man is really Batmite. Right. Uh, I think you pointed out and said that his the jacket he wears is like two different shades of gray, yep. which are Batman colors. And it's got a yellow. He's wearing a yellow and black. Uh, flannel shirt, which are Batman colors. Yep. Uh, he doesn't. And they reference Batman. Bat. They reference Matt Batmite in the show. Yeah. Actually. And this guy looks like a little weirdo that they could probably take his face and put him on a little weird body. And it almost would explain. Now, I don't think Batmite would have provided. Uh, I don't think Batmite would provide Peacemaker's dad with all that technology. Well, uh, but think, think about the technology. Maybe not the the. Uh, the white dragon tech, but like a lot of those helmets were like super chaotic and weird, which is something that Batmite would do. He yeah, has, and has also a folding, a, a folding pocket dimension. Which, yeah, and, uh, you know, Batmite is a fifth dimensional being. Like he's yeah. like kind of like the I don't know if he comes from the same dimension as Mister Mitzelplex. That might just like a weird character. It's been around since the fifties. Kind of like when comics just was so ridiculous at that point. They had Batman like fighting the Martians, like it was just yeah. like, anything goes. Like, uh, and again, this guy always talking about Batman. Like, Batmite is Batman's like biggest fan, but also right. like, a troublemaker. That's like the joke. So, and I think James Gunn is the perfect person to handle a character like that and know how to. I mean, we've seen him with Groot and and uh, all the other crazy characters in Guardians Galaxy and in Marvel. Yeah. And we see what he's done with like the characters from Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. So Batmite would be perfect for him. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I hope it's true just because I think it would make the show fun. I don't want like a silly little Batmite running around all the time, but it would right. be. It like, I was like, to be an arc, you know? The other, okay. The best part of the show, though, before we move on, the intro. Oh, it's so good. The intro is possibly one of the best the way it's shot the yep. way it's like it's the camera like 
it's like it's like a weird American Idol. Like it, it's not film footage. It looks like yeah, it looks like American Idol. Like it looks like something you would see on like TV. It's yeah. bizarre. It's it's super bizarre. Um, it is like great. funny. I'm like, why is this old man in there? Why the, the janitor who shows yeah. up? He did show up again. He's like in one scene, the first episode, <laughs> and I like yeah. sweeps by. It's like the funniest thing. But there is that episode where John Cena or uh, Peacemaker goes to the school for him. He does that guy a favor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, There's a lot of um. I don't know if you've seen on TikTok that a lot of people do the Peacemaker dance. And, yeah, and of course. The, the, of course yeah, that's and, one of the most imitated to the point where it's going to ruin it, you know? Yeah, it's I, so I, great, I, though. I refuse to watch it. I'm going to just, <laughs> I'm only going to watch the show and not watch the, the cringe worthy. The cringe out. dances. Wow. Yeah. I liked, uh, I liked, uh, what's his face? Um, what's his name? The karate guy? What was his name? Oh, Judo, Judo Master. Judo Master. Yeah, that guy's yeah. awesome. Um, I like the whole, like, you know, he was like truly upset by their deaths. I guess yeah. he was convinced that they were there to save the earth. Like I said, as an audience, as a member of the audience, I feel like were they there to help the earth? I mean, in theory, you could say, yeah, they were, but you also saw them unrelentlessly murdering people. And they were in a situation now where you, you see the cow, which is really just this gigantic caterpillar. Yeah. I love the uh, uh, What's his face is uh, Economos saying not another kaiju because of like, <laughs> pro- and I love it's like these projects like Project Butterfly, Project Starfish. They're literal names like Project Starfish. It was right. literally a gigantic starfish. Project Butterfly. It was literally butterfly Butterfly-like like aliens. There's, yeah, there's no like like the next set in the season is like uh, Project Can of Beans. <laughs> a can of beans like yeah there's no like subtlety it's literally up front it's <laughs> it is what it um, is it is what it is but um yeah i don't know i th- the caterpillar was awesome yeah for sure i have one question though hmm. what, what who fed the caterpillar yeah that's it's... i mean i don't i, I just i just threw that out there like you know the because you find out basically the butterflies um they could drink the water they could breathe the air but the food does not they are not nothing on earth sustains them except for the fucking honey milk that comes out of this this giant kind of porgish looking uh yeah. looking a little bit like a pork it's kind of cute yeah. big giant ball sack monster <laughs> that squirted out you know uh in, in it was adorable and repulsive at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I'm like, you know, like that thing feeds us and they have to keep it safe. The whole goal was to like uh, teleport it to another direct, another place. And if they teleport it, then that means they can't beat the butterflies. Mm-hmm. You know, like the way to kill the butterflies off is to basically kill the Get food. rid of their food source, yeah. And I'm curious, like, you know, what, what, what feeds the... Yeah. Because she says Goth, what's her name? Goth? Or Goth. Was the, the, the senator's name was Goth, and that's what they started calling the lead the lead alien. The alien oh, okay. said their name. We can't pronounce their names. It's like no, that's right. She says, like, basically, they're gonna die anyway. Yeah. Because they have this one cow, but it'll live for like a hundred years, so they could do their job, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I, yeah. it, I think it was her trying to play into peacemakers like uh better just like whatever just sympathize sympathy yeah I, I think it was like uh oh shit like i do love the uh what's her face got turned into the human torpedo yeah got shot into that thing and then it just rained guts yeah that was, that was really <laughs> funny she was great on our she was great on orange is the new black she's always like really good when she shows up yeah all the cast yeah. was great. They were all yeah. really good. Um, and um, <laughs> that it was one it guy, was, the Cosmo. Uh, I keep saying his name wrong. Uh, Economos when yeah. he trips and breaks his <laughs> leg. I was like, oh my god! It was like such a stupid trip too. He yeah. like, He's like he going over a fence or bones, something. You see the bone sticking yeah, out? Yeah, that was awful. <laughs> oh god. It, 
<laughs> great show. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad that it's doing well. I'm glad that people like it. Yeah, think, for sure. I think, I think this is the kind of thing that DC needs for their entertainment thing. Um, I think it runs a weird, you know, people are like, oh, they should do this with everything. They're not going to do this with everything. They're not going to take off. They're not going to, like, okay, the new Batman movie that's coming out, like, it's supposed to be greedy and stuff, but like, not sure. like Batman being like, talking to like, like a railing cat woman in a scene. Like, <laughs> they're not right. going to have, like, say the F word a million times. No, no. They, they're not going to do that. Like, it'll be mature ish, but they're not going to, like, it's still, I think, a PG 13 movie. PG 13. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool, though, to see more stuff like this. I think this is what, yeah. Mar- I think this is what, DC needs to really stand out from Marvel movies is to be like, hey, we we have no problem taking like a third or half our characters and putting them in these type of situations that brings a different level of entertainment that opens up, you know. Uh, but again, it's like these are characters you know, get like on the comics and everything. Yeah, Peacemaker, Vigilante, like no one gives a fuck about these. No one gives no. a fuck about these characters in the comics. I mean, like, come on. Anyone who claims it, they're lying. I no, mean, this was like, real similar to kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, which weren't really super well known before the, the films. You know, not really. I mean, there were always. I don't care what anyone says. I've talked to people about this, and I'm like, no bullshit. I'm like, Star Lord was a grade Z. Star Lord was a grade D character. Yeah. And they yeah. made it to the point where Star Lord is like just as important as Captain America, or Thor, or Iron Man, or the Hulk. And I'm yeah, like, none okay, of Spider Man. It's like that's because of the movie. Right, I movie. was pretty into comics, and I only had like a peripheral knowledge of those. I mean, I'd heard of Star Lord. I'd heard like of I could have come to but... more, like forever. I never got into those. Characters. Yeah, I never, never, never read those. Books. And I liked Warlock and Silver Surfer, which yeah. just kind of falls into that realm. And yeah. Star Lord wasn't in any of that shit. Yeah. So, like, I mean, listen, who cares? It's a different form of media. And that, in the end of the day, I mean, it's almost like anything. It's like there's characters that they'll say, like, five years ago, like, this character sucks. It'll never be anything. Guess what? Now the character is in the most popular show yeah. on a streaming service. And everybody is like, go and run out and buy that comic book that Peacemaker first premiered in, yeah. Richard Manny first premiered in. Yeah. Regardless if the character is the same in the show or not, like right. all of a sudden now those people want that, and that's going for like a hundred bucks. It's like it's funny how that works. Um, the end. Oh, real quick, wrap it up. Uh, the ending was really funny though, because there was a reference to like calling the Justice League again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But everything was already done. Like Peacemakers, because hardcore. I love like when they're fighting and she starts to get shot, and the intro music starts yeah. to kind of die out as she like passes out because she gets really fucked up she gets shot a bunch of times um but he's carrying her and like you see the shadows of like superman wonder woman aquaman flash yeah and he's like you fuck you're like you're late you fucks or whatever he curses them out yeah yeah and he tells aquaman to go fuck a fish but they got <laughs> they actually got uh yeah those, jason momoa and um like, Ezra something? What's Ezra Miller? Yeah. 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 To, to show up and like get out of the shadows and be Aquaman and Flash. And the best is Flash says like, you know, it's we all know it's true. Yeah. It's like, That's not true. And she's like, yeah, we know it's true. And they start laughing. Aquaman's like, fuck you, Barry. He's like, yeah, yeah. fuck you, Barry. Yeah. And then like, <gasps> the funny thing is like, people are like, well, what does it mean? Superman and Wonder Woman were in shadows. It just means they couldn't get the other people yeah. I heard too that they actually filmed those on like a, a Marvel set. Yeah, supposedly yeah. like Marvel. This is like a weird like. I mean, it's not like it's a, it doesn't make it a Marvel movie or anything, but I guess it was on like a set because James Gunn was finishing this project. Yeah, while finishing, uh, while working on Guardians of the Galaxy three and right. the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, which is supposed to come out. Oh in the yeah, that's right. I've heard that's about that. Awesome. That's yeah. gonna be fucking funny. I hope it's exactly like the Star Wars Christmas special. Yes, me too. <laughs> but, yeah, obviously, it'll be better. But uh, and here's the here's the one thing before we move on. Everyone likes Peacemaker. Everyone likes the su- people like the Suicide Squad movie. I think people will now will yeah. go back and watch the Suicide Squad movie because they like Peacemaker. 
Um, and it only happened because a bunch of online Nazi trolls got James Gunn fired from yeah. Disney. All this happened. All of it. Because um, I can even I can find the names of these assholes that started. Yeah, the, I remember this. Yeah. Surface like stupid tweets of his from a decade ago that were just you know they were ugly tweets. But he even said they were bad jokes. I'm sure. Yeah. I'll say this to anybody: if you had Twitter account since 2007, you should delete right. like five years of just the week. <laughs> five years. Anything from like 2007 to 2015. Yeah, it's not a bad. Maybe even like two years ago. Just delete them all if you're a comedian or anyone. Yeah. Like um, regardless, I just find that really funny in the day that, and it's great that Peacemaker's a hit. It's kind of funny too, because these fuckers try to get him fired and get him like to lose a job. Yeah. And where they say the best revenge is success. Yeah. And it's, it, yeah. And it's, it's, he's been and very the, successful. And the joke was like he got fired by Disney. Disney was very stupid for reacting and having him removed. It was awesome that all uh, everyone supposedly they tried to get Taika Waititi to take over, and he oh, said, yeah. "I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to direct Guardians of the movie." I mean, he's kind. Of, the joke is he is directing Guardians and the new Thor movie. Right? Who cares? They're going to be in it, but he's not. He's like, "No, I'm not doing it." All these uh, they tried to get it, and then James Gunn got picked up immediately by Warner Brothers and did Suicide Squad movie. Yeah. And lost that show, and then shortly after, Disney hired him back. Yeah. No, it's worked, that works out well. <laughs> yeah, but shitty on Disney's part for firing him. Because, yeah. Because they, what they should have done, consider the source. Yeah, that's, say, a, like, that's a big deal. Do the research and be like, yes, are his tweets all, were they stupid? Yes. But you know who he is. I'm sure they do a background check on everyone yeah. that works for them, or they try to. They should have considered the source of who started this campaign. For sure. And realize that these are some hideous people who have said way worse shit than James Gunn yeah, said. That's, that's you know, a joke. Horrible people. Like ridiculous. So hey, yeah. guess what? We got we get we got better entertainment out of it. Yeah, yeah. not bad. Not a bad deal. <laughs> hey, you know what? Worked out great for Warner Brothers. They got the yeah. they got the biggest hit on their freaking streaming service. It opens the door for well, I think they're going to do a rat catcher show. So oh, I can see that. Sure. She was great. I love that character yep. with a rat. The rat was awesome. I love that. Yeah. Character. Yeah. Her little rat. I forgot his name. He was adorable. Yeah. That yeah. was, that was what yeah. peace Kate peace uh, maker was joking with his dad about was that uh, blood sport was afraid of rats because his father abused him with rats. <laughs> the- yeah. <laughs> laughing about it like yeah. <laughs> like that, that's not funny <laughs> yeah it's no. funny too because his father was abusive yeah yeah it's totally funny. Funny. <laughs> yeah hysterical all right okay well speaking of abusive yeah right uh abbott greg yeah abbott. greg abbott um this is like a weird speaking of a... child abuse greg abbott well it's a weird story so today greg abbott did one super horrible thing, one just kind of crappy thing, and then it was revealed that he did something terrible about a year ago. And a lot of people are speculating that they're kind of related. So this this morning, over the last couple of days, Ken Paxton, who is the state attorney general, and who's also been under indictment for like six years for all these yeah, he's a person. And he's just a shitty person. Um, anyway, he's Talk been... He's been saying that trans trans surgery is child abuse. If, if you're a parent and you do gender affirming surgery or sign off on gender affirming surgery for your kid, they don't even do abuse. that. Right. No, that's no, 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 it's true. They don't even do that. They don't do yeah. any of that. Let me tell you, there's a great there's a great clip. You can find it on YouTube, the majority report. I don't remember the person's name, but she called in. She was a trans woman called in. Who was like an advocate or whatever? Uh, right. and it was all about what happened here, and she brought up all the facts about uh, transgender like surgeries and everything, and said yeah. that they're lying. First of all, it took years for her to have her surgery. It took, like, yeah, they're not so giving. many. First of all, you have to be over eighteen. There's so many 
like red tape and loopholes. Like you need a therapist. Yeah. So much. She's like, you can't just like. It took like five years. Like this, they're right. making it sound like people are just taking their kids to the doctor and having the kids like you know right just turn into vaginas or vice versa exactly no one's as like a their... day visit at the pediatrician and yeah. it's insane and that's what they're making it out to be and and so anyway uh there's there's a little more to it but that's that's the, the thrust of it and greg abbott today then came out and and this is really really awful and and scary he he said that gender affirming surgery was child abuse uh and then but the the follow-up to that was was the worst one if you are a mandatory reporter which includes social workers priests cops firefighters teachers um and you see a trans kid you got to report them to yeah the this is like that um this is like that thing in Florida with the like reporting like gay yes. kids and like the school has to tell the parents, right. which is like, which is like, no, the parents sometimes are like abusive and like the school is supposed to protect the kid. Yeah. Yeah. And there's teachers go through trainings all the time about like, um, about stuff like that. Like if you have a kid who prefers like she pronouns at school but might be recognized as a boy at home, you're supposed to like juggle that in your head, you know, like as a teacher, you're supposed to call the child she in class, but then if you have to make a call home, you're supposed to shift to the pronouns that the parent expects. You know I mean? Like there's a whole, people go through trainings on how to deal with that. Well, but, regardless, this is just, this is just uh, an act of, uh, cruelty well it's just it, all that this is all that the texas gop is is cruelty yeah and to, and to be perfectly honest with you um t- t- teachers need to just not do this you know I mean, they need to decline doing this and I, I don't know any other way to say it but like i'm not expecting anyone to, to nail themselves to a cross in front of the state capitol building but like you're just supposed to pretend you didn't see it you know it's like when, when you if you saw someone shoplifting food you didn't see someone shoplifting food, well, why would teacher you know? want to get involved with this shit well regardless to i'm not making thing. an equivalence here but like if a kid shows up to school with a black eye and unwashed that's and different i know that's i know but i'm saying that's the the premise behind it because like that yeah. sucks I, I remember as a teacher when i when i taught like kids joking around like oh you know i did such and such and my dad beat my ass and you're sitting there you're like okay the kid he's probably just using a figure of speech right but like did the dad beat us i mean is this something i should poke around i mean it's a very it, it gets very yeah no, that's a, right. this is this is a but what they're doing that's sick is, is that they're saying that if a family is accepting of their child who's trans um and the kid shows up and says i'm either she or he or whatever yeah. they're saying that the parents are abusing their children and they're trying to create a situation where a teacher would treat that the same way they would yeah. treat actually physically abused malnourished child and that's disgusting well it's 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 disgusting and it's, i'll tell you it's, 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 it's real complicated too because like if you're if you're a kid kids they can be influenced you know they can be and i and by that i mean like if you have a it wouldn't surprise me if you had a situation where a kid had some questions about their their gender or their identity or whatever and the parent just tries to support the kid and then the kid goes to school and they get some bible thumping teacher and the bible thumping teacher's like your parents are abusing you and it it can shift real quickly like things get very sticky and complicated and that's why this is a matter you know that's best well, yeah i mean it's super close to the kid well I think this is because of his mic. There's like weird noises, but because um, okay. you're using your computer and I think it picks up any distortion I have in my end. Uh, uh, so 
it's yeah it's disgusting because it what it does is it trivializes real abuse well yeah it confuses the narrative and again it's also an act it's an act of cruelty i mean well, and it and it's ridiculous it's like what if like what if their parents like what if their kid's just like a, a tomboy that's that's the other thing is that like like you know what i mean like what if the kid just she likes like even then we're not getting it i'm not going to get into the whole thing but what if she's like you know i'm just a tomboy like well yeah what like if, are they going to call the parents up and like what could if, call them a child abuse that's insane yeah it's, it's the, the, the 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 awful part for me is that this is just another example of the the texas gop but you know the gop as a whole they are they're weaponizing the public and the machinery of government against vulnerable people you know pregnant women with with very few options they put bounties on them you know they 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 deputize oh, this the, the citizenry to, to track them um, and this is and this has all happened and you could say too there's people who are legitimately going to have are going to be harmed by this but at the end of the day, we also realize that all of this is just one big giant distraction from the main fact that basically, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I tweet about it. Uh, where is it? Hold on. Where are you? Well, as, you, as you're tracking that out. Okay. Go ahead. What are you going to say though? Well, he, he also did another thing today where I guess uh, about... Maybe 18 or 19 police officers from the Austin Police Department were arrested for, oh, about this. for abusing protesters. Right? Did you? Yeah. And I didn't know he, that. what'd you say? I didn't hear about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so now they got arrested. And this is like were, BLM protesters, not the yeah. stupid trucker shit that. No, they the, the cops were shooting like bean bags at, at protesters' faces and stuff. So a bunch of these cops got arrested and Greg Abbott said, well, I'm gonna pardon them all. Mm, of course but, he is. Yeah, well, and he can for state. I mean, like ideally they'll get federal charges anyway, but that, then he also did that today. And, but this third thing that I think you're gonna talk about kind of suggests, hey, maybe he was doing these other terrible things. It's like, look here, look over here and look over yeah. here. And again, he's an absolute horrible person. But here's the fourth one, and this probably is, this is the thing where I would say to everybody, regardless of what you think of fucking trans people, what do you think of BLM, yeah. what do you think of gay people or any of that, or women getting, having abortion, if you just fucking open up your fucking eyes for once and stop listening to your church or stop yeah. your dumbass fucking uh, uncle or whatever, like, or your racist dad that has a supply <laughs> of uh, alien technology <laughs> that, to uh, um, here's this tweet from Sawyer Hackett. Holy yes. shit, this is big. The former chief of the Texas Power Grid testified today that Greg Abbott instructed officials to charge maximum amount for power during the winter storm. Texans still owe $3.4 billion. Yeah. And this is going on where, like, you know, this year, thankfully, we have not had as an insane winter like we did last year. But I will say that uh, Texans better get used to it because with climate change, this shit is going to happen. Oh, Every yeah. Year, your winners, you're going to have some really awful months. Yep. And uh, it's this is going to be the norm. It's going to be the fucking norm. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have weeks where it's going to be like 20 degrees and houses that are poorly insulated or uh, people. Uh, or the power grid that's poorly insulated. I mean, wasn't that like the joke was the power grid failed? It was because the gas pipelines froze. So I, I think that was it, much, yeah. That's pretty much it. I mean, these idiots like don't care. Like uh, ex aircraft chief says Abbott directed freeze blackouts to stop before decision to run up billions in bills. Uh, the former head of Texas, this was in Houston Chronicle, uh, He's following the direction of Governor Greg Abbott when the grid manager ordered wholesale power prices to stay at maximum price gap. So that was the thing last year was all these people, were, they were losing their power. Some people were out of power for like a week. Yeah. Uh, and some people died. A lot of people died because of it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They, it's all because the power grid's on its own. 
It's because Texas is cheap. They want to maximize profit. The volta- the, the I guess the government standard or something is like 15% and Texas is on its own power grid. And people are like, that's good. That means Texas is more functional. No, mm, actually, no. no, it's not. The, their standard is like half of what the country's is. And why are they doing that? They're doing it because they want to make more money. Yeah. If they had to do it what the government standard was, the grid would probably not have failed. Yeah, theoretically, it started out because Texas had a lot of energy, had a lot of oil and stuff, and they thought they could go it alone and be better off. But as as time's gone on, it's been revealed that it's not necessarily been what's happening. It's it's just been like some deregulation and people making a lot of money. And it seemed like, look, I don't think Greg Abbott gives a fuck one way or the other about mm-hmm. trans people. You know, I think, oh, I, I think he, I think he does. I think, I think uh, only a monster, a hateful bigot monster. Um, would go along with this. I, yeah. I think he, I, he has to have some bigotry. I'm sorry, you can't. Oh yeah, no. I don't, look. I'm not saying he's. I, I mean, then that just makes him even more evil because it's like he has no empathy for humanity. I yeah, mean, I'm saying a like five if, brand races. Maybe they put more thought into it. You know, if um, supporting trans rights gave him more power and money, he'd be all for that too. I, I, I guess I what I'm saying yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I mean, then he would be a totally different politician, and he would not. He probably would also be better on the power grid. Because well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this is like uh, it just seems like there, there's just an irony of like I always find it funny how the worst politicians, the most corrupt, worst politicians usually are also the ones that have no problem appeasing racists. Yeah, and I'm sure. Because those are the, the people that are dumb enough to vote for these people who are clearly in the bed of polluters and energy companies and meatpacking companies, companies that don't want any regulations. Right. Uh, one of the funniest things about this year, which I don't think was really a big effect last year, was I guess a lot of crypto mining moved into Texas over the Oh, year. yeah. And one of the things they, they like begged the crypto miners to turn off last week, uh, it was like a week or two ago when it was it was cold. It got cold for a couple mm-hmm. of days in the, in the teens here. Uh, now, again, it wasn't as bad as last year, but I remember Abbott or whatever, they were like saying, because they basically allowed these people to bring in big servers, the crypto yeah. mining, literally a building full of servers. It's all it is. Which I still find really bizarre. Um, and they were like begging to like, you know, hey, can you like take a break for a day? Right, tone it down, yeah. And it's funny too, because I forgot what country they were in originally, and uh, Texas was like, "Yeah, hey, you come here. We have no regulations. You can't <laughs> you can't here. We don't give a fuck." Um, it, it, remember last year too? They were trying to blame the uh, and tr- Trump was it Trump? No, well, he always said that they cause cancer. Uh, what do they call them? The windmills. The, oh yeah, uh, yeah, the wind generators. Yeah, windmills. Yeah. Yeah, they tried to say they tried to blame that. They said, "Oh, look, they froze. It's their, it's the green energy's fault." And they were yeah. like, "Motherfucker, that only accounts for like ten percent of the energy in Texas. Not even this yeah. is all it's, it's oil, negligible. All oil refineries, you fuckheads. Like these, these fucking like that's how you know they work in bad faith. In that they won't admit to anything. They, they, they blame. They go after. They, it's like everything's always an attack on whatever they're against. So like." They, yeah. you know, it's funny, all the companies make a ton of money off of these windmills, uh, or what are they called? The, uh, the, the uh, turb- are you talking about turbines? Is that what they're? Yeah, the big, yeah. I, I always just call them windmills. I drove or by them. They're or... like, there's like thousands of them. It's insane. Yeah. Um, they're like on the way to Amarillo. There's like tons of them. They go on for miles. Um, and that's their reflex is to blame green any energy when in reality, yeah. no, it's fucking oil but most of the gop texas lo- uh politicians are really just oil lobbyists Greg yeah, Abbott's sure. really an oil lobbyist like he's not really but like what do they do after the failure last year and whatever potential failure will be this year in the future they decided to go attack marginalized people instead and go yeah. after women's rights they doubled down i mean a lot, i think again some of this was a reaction to biden winning uh and you know, trying to be like, we're going to defy everything that's progressive and we're going to become the most fucking um, backward state in the union as much as we can. Yeah. And, and 
see, I know people like it's like a shock this thing happened today, but this was planned a year ago. I mean, this isn't new. We no. knew that they were going to do this, that they were going to go after the kids, the parents of kids that were transgender. This they, is disgusting. Yeah, they've been inching along this route for a while now. Um, it is real strange. Like, it wasn't that long ago that that basically public pressure brought North Carolina to its knees with those bathroom bills. North Carolina was going to have a bathroom bill. I think bill. that North Carolina might have more more of a more pro progressives, more outspoken progressives than could be. Uh, could I be. Mean, uh, Texas also went out. Uh, it's been reported on top of that with the primaries happening the past couple of days, right? Yeah. That there's parts of it where they are literally removing votes from people. Well, I started thinking El Paso where like a ton of, they say that like on average, it's like five, 10%. It's been right. an average in Texas where they try to kick people off the voter roll. The, it was, I don't even know the numbers. It was astronomical. It was I, I like, saw one statistic that was like 40%. Yeah. It was a crazy number. And um, that's the case. Beto ain't winning shit. Beto well, better get fucking lawyers because yeah. this is going to be a this is going to be a fucking fight. Like, I, and I after the after this today, I, I, the people who vote for Abbott are just scum. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. It is. It's weird. I think the temptation because you look at Flor Florida and Texas are kind of leading the way in these shitty things uh, by by and far. I think Arizona. Every once in a while, makes a good run at doing something terrible, and yeah. maybe Wisconsin seems to be like a pretty well, shitty place every, sometimes. Every state has shitty people in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Texas and Florida right now, it's baked into the cake. Yeah, like, it's, they're, it's, the main, they're the main ingredient. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Man. We'll go ahead. What? Well, the, the problem is that like whatever happens in Texas. Or Florida, if it finds its way to a circuit court, it poisons the entire country. Of course, I mean I'll go to this. Well, everything that they were doing too in uh, all the red states and everything, all these things are meant to go to the right wing Supreme Court. Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything they do is there so that the end result is to one uh, take away a woman's right to choose yep. completely. If it's already pretty much gone. In a lot of parts of the United States, but just just kill Roe versus Wade. That's the number one thing. Yep. That's why they put in all these ridiculous things so that there would be a lawsuit, and that lawsuit would make it into the hands of Amy Coney Barrett and the yeah. other uh, right wing judges. And then same thing with this uh, transgender. Basically anything. Of course, it's a great distraction to get people not pay attention to the power grid. Uh, the stuff that you know. Again, we live in a modern society and we need energy to yeah. live the way we want to live. We're not hunters. I'm sorry. I know yeah. people have some nope. crossbows in their garage, but if you're fucking shopping at Whole Foods or uh, like any supermarket in the area for all your stuff, you're not a survivalist. I'm sorry. No. Uh, I mean, maybe you might know a little better than me and that's fine. Whatever. Sure. But, <laughs> Calm down there, Crocodile Dundee. Like, you, you live here. If you, like you said, if you live in the fucking boonies where there's nothing. Yeah, and yeah. You're like, honey snipe to live. Yeah, then right. you're on you. you know what, Joseph? I just got to say something. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> I'm so tired of this shit. You know what? I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm you are. Texas. I got, I decided. I just called up. <laughs> called the realtor. I got a house. And I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, well, you are. You're moving to to where am I? No, but I'm moving to Colorado. I'm getting yeah. out of here. Uh, yeah. We're, we're uh, I mean, we've been all joking aside. We are. We are. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that is true. We are moving to Colorado. Not just if he's staying there. He's like, now that Rob's gone, I could finally dress up as <laughs> Red Dragon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, rent out the community is, center for my. Yeah, I rent out the community now that you can rent out the community center for like your TV version. torch rally. T yeah, yeah, that fucking that joke last year. Like, uh, um, yeah, we've been playing this for a while. It's been a while. We both work from home and everything, so there and and 
I mean, we lived here like eight years. I moved here specifically for a job. Uh, actually, nine years ago. Shit, it would be nine years in yeah. October. Uh, which, so whatever, eight and a half years we'll be here. Um, and I left that job like four years ago. So the there's been a lot of factors. Like if I could have stayed here, I would. I would, it, but there's just too much. Well, one, the air is not the greatest here. Uh, no. Allergies are absolutely yeah. awful. Uh, are. Colorado has better air than here. <laughs> it just does. Um, and the reality is, it's it's the politics. They're yeah. just. I mean, I feel like I knew. I mean, I knew this state. You know, like I grew up in New York and I lived in California. But the joke <laughs> was like. You know, everyone talks about New York's this liberal bastion, California's this little bastion. Well, you know what? I grew up in Long Island and it was conservative as fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was conservative true. as fuck and racist as fuck. And it was not the city in any way whatsoever. It was white flight. And some of the most racist fucking people I ever met in my life live in Long Island. And then we moved to Chico, California. And I would not call that a liberal bastion at all. If anything, no. I would say it's like libertarian land. I mean, it has a liberal bent to it, but it's a li- libertarian. People there are fucking weird anti-vaxxer. A lot fucking, of anti-government sentiment. Yeah, a lot of libertarian shit there. Um, and that and that was a weird part of California. So I figured we moved to DFW, uh, which is the, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth mm, yeah. uh, area. And it's like, you know, we're not living in a bog in the middle of Texas. No. It's a metropolitan area. We're near Dallas, we're near Denton. And there's some, you know, I was like, listen, I know that uh, Texas is supposed to be this red state, but there was like some hope, you know, it's like it's turning like in 2018. It was changing. It's going blue a little bit. Who knows, you know, beta. Oh my God. You know? Right, yeah. Um, but man, this past couple of years with the pandemic, the way they reacted to it and how they handled it, absolutely disgusting. I think yeah. it revealed a real, uh, you know, it's like I put up with bullshit for years, but even like it's funny, even if I lived in Long Island, I lived in racist Long Island, there would still have been progressive politicians running. And yeah. it's still like, yeah, would my neighbor be an old racist? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but who cares? <laughs> because you know what? I don't have to worry about like, my kid going to school with a bunch of fucking maskless uh, COVID carriers because their church told them not to wear masks and the politicians are like, I'm going to sue the fucking yeah. school if they try putting masks in. These are states that even if the, the yeah, like I said, it's conservatives living everywhere. It's people everywhere in this country you live, right wingers are going to run into progressive people they don't like. Yeah. Vice versa. What you got to hope for is that you live in an area that at least, especially during a world, and I will say it, closest thing ever to my lifetime, mm-hmm. world-ending pandemic. Yeah, it, it was bad. It was bad. It was, and still is potentially a world yeah. pandemic. If they do not get the vaccines out in time, the new vaccines out in time, if they do not put in the right mitigations, this will kill more people and the virus will mutate and areas like where this state where the politicians work in tandem to make sure that people have the freedom to die of covid yeah while cutting medicaid uh not accepting the medicaid from the aca years ago of course we have ghouls like abbott running the state I put up with it for a while. I put, I was able to put up with it. I was able to be like, eh, you know, some of these politics, I don't agree with these people. But you know what? I didn't think it would affect my fucking health, be an yeah, actual yeah. detrimental effect. Now, people might be thinking I'm crazy because there's a lot of people that live here. And I'll be, f- be fair. There's a lot of people in the country who don't think about this. Don't give a shit. They don't care. They'll say, oh, yeah, I wear a mask. They don't. They, you're going to run to those people no matter what. You just have to hope the local government or the governor or the state, whatever, puts in precautions and stuff like that and takes things seriously. Yeah. Or if there was like um, a uh, environmental disaster, like what happened here last year, yeah. an environmental disaster, Texas 
in response to an environmental disaster, decided to fuck over Texas. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and appear an appeal to the worst of Texas with their bigotry and their big. They did nothing to fix the power grid. Nothing. I'm I'm over it. And, and you know what? Like I said, it's time to like just try a different place. Yeah, like sometimes you need a change of yeah, scenery. We don't you know? have family here. I mean, well, like we as parents have been living here. They're going to move anyway. They're not yeah. from here. But like our roots are not here. We, we there's a lot of I'm, I'm probably revealing way too much uh, <laughs> on this podcast that's really just a commercial for Joseph's uh, Taco Bell uh, tokens that he sells. Um, <laughs> that's all this is really just a vehicle for Baja Blast tokens yeah. uh, that you can get on uh, RazzleCon. My, uh, my Baja Blast uh, NFTs <laughs> on RazzleCon's Discord. You can sign up to that. Um, it it's just in, you know it's like every day i get like you know i'll be upset i do there's people here that i do like that i know you know yeah, yeah. One. yeah. uh but like and there's places i like to go and there's things i'm gonna miss but like man then you see something like this today where it's like not one bad thing not two bad things not three bad things but four horrendously yeah. horrible things that are all coming from this government in texas and I'm sorry, I don't. I hope Beto wins, but I don't think he's going to. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he will. I hope he does, but I don't. I don't, I don't well, know that he it, will. You said you saw the votes be people getting kicked off the votes. That, that's a preview for like. Well, a lot of those forever. are a lot of those are Republicans too. Like they when you when you curtail voting rights, you, it's hard to do it with a scalpel. You know, I mean, often but, you do it with a machete. But, but that idiot Dan Patrick, like, told all of his supporters to mail his their ballots to the wrong place. That's been a disaster for him. You know, I mean, he's it's been tricky. Uh, but didn't they also put in a thing basically that says they can question an election here? Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know that that got through. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Regardless, I'm sh- shenanigans will happen. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, that's downplaying how serious it is. Regardless, you know, I think Colorado is a state that we visited several times. My wife lived there for a couple of years. It's a really nice area. Denver is a really awesome city. I do, like I said, there's parts of Texas I like. I like yeah. I met some really cool people here. I met. Uh, just like I met some shitty people here. That's everywhere I live. Yeah. Uh, that's like, that's going to be, that's going to be a thing. People, you're going to run into all kinds of people. Some of the most conservative people I ever met were in New York and in Chicago. Yeah. Real true. But again, <laughs> you have to, it's like, who's in charge? Who, who makes the decisions? This, those states, I don't have to worry about like the more Alex Sean watching Lunatic and Chico. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't have to worry about that person being in charge. Here's the problem is that it's baked into the cake here, just like any real red state. Now, I know people talk about how Texas has democratic roots, but I mean, what was the last time there was a democratic governor? Ann Richards, that was how many years ago? Probably like 30, 30 40 years. Yeah. Almost 30 years ago. Well, That's a different world, and the kind of Democrat that they would vote for is a different kind of progressive that is today. If you're a progressive today, you have to accept. If you claim to be a progressive, you have to accept. You, you can't play this bullshit that you're like uh, anti SJW or you don't fall for like the pronoun or that shit. You're not an, an, a true progressive ally. Accepts all progressive things so you know what i'm saying oh yeah yeah Uh, people in the 90s or when ann richards ran they were more conservative back then oh yeah yeah well you know honestly like a lot of people were more moderate back then like looking back on like reagan seems pretty moderate compared to some of the monsters running today as he does i mean like compared to I a guess. Lot of, I mean, yeah. that's an. I wouldn't call it moderatism. No. <laughs> it's like one extreme to another. I mean, that just relative to to what we see today. I guess. Um, yeah. 
I don't know. I I mean, I don't know. He said that fucking ketchup was a vegetable. That's true. pretty fucking extreme. They they you look back at some Reagan shit. I don't know why people say that Reagan was uh, modern in any way. You look back to some. It wasn't of a moderate. He was a, a radical right Republican at the time. I'm just saying that. Rad- like, what, what is a radical right Republican today is much different than what a radical right Republican was 30, 40 years ago. I guess. I guess well, they're like. Know. I mean, I'd say if you are saying ketchup is a vegetable, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, well, I, let me let me rephrase that, and and that'll kind of play into what I'm about to say next. Um, I think for for us, like as uh, I, mean, I, I won't speak for you, but for me, as like a middle class white male, you know, that's cisgendered and just sort of the average Joe, so to speak. Literally. Um, yeah, literally, you know, like I'm an average, I'm an average guy, and I have like a, a, oh. an immense amount of privilege that's kind of carried me through life and stuff like that. Uh, that I was just sort of born into, and and my ancestors gained unfairly or whatever. It may not seem like a lot, but you have to look at the big picture and realize, oh wait, I do. You know what yeah, I mean? Oh yeah. Uh, you're like, like, I'm not driving around in a yeah. Van you, if, van or... if I'm driving, if I'm driving down the road and I, I see police lights behind me, I just calmly pull over and see what the officer wants. That's, 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 that's like a, they're not gonna shoot you in the face. Never even enters my my mind, you know, that 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 I'm gonna get killed on a, at a traffic stop. And right. when I bought my first house, a I bought a house, and b it was with like I don't know three grand my grandfather left me that I put down. You know, uh, me and my wife had some money, but like a big chunk of it came from like. Three thousand dollars that my grandfather left me. It was like a he had money to leave me. So, yeah. so like when I'm looking at all this, like was Reagan? Uh, I, I look at Reagan as like this kind of like radical right Republican or whatever from my perspective today. But like he was pretty pro immigration, and he probably seemed pretty fucking liberal to a lot of people that want to immigrate here. True, you know, there are. Least, I guess on like a very there are yeah. these things that like fuck even there's some things in george w bush administration yeah. that in comparison to how insane the trump administration was if you're a dreamer or first generation second generation coming in from from mexico or guatemala or whatever george w bush probably does seem pretty moderate to be i honest. will say one thing though Hold mm-hmm. on, this is bad because I remember this specifically coming out of his mouth. They had a program, they wanted to have it where it wasn't okay. I'm like the dreamer thing where it's like you work your way and oh, yeah, yeah, you'll dream of being a citizen. It's so fucking patronizing. It's like I know, but they could dream to live here. It's like, of course, that's all well, that does is it's a dream, it's like, a natural born citizen. Like, we live in the best country, it's a privilege for you to be here. Make my dinner, you piece of shit, you dreamer. <laughs> Like whoever came up with that is like it's genius. It's I know, but like the ego of America, like Frank Luntz. But if yeah. you, if you're if you're a, a 1.5 generation Mexican American and you're comparing George W. Bush to Donald Trump, guess who seems pretty moderate? You know, well, George it's W. Bush. Pretty- they had they wanted to do a program. I don't know if it actually kicked through. They wanted to do a program where it just allowed people to live there for a little bit, and then you got to get the fuck out. Yeah, right. but really, all that was you could stay and work. <laughs> okay, you could stay for like two years to work, and then we're going to kick you out. Basically, yeah. we're going to work you to death, and and we're going to get rid of you before you little fuckers try to like start a union and yeah. or get any word of a union because you'll be we'll send you back to your uh, country. I mean, that's exactly yeah. it. They'll go with, like, they made it sound like, you'll make so much money here and you can bring it back home. And it's like, no, that's not it. You want to use and abuse uh, foreign labor, invite them in, treat them like shit. They will have, ne- they will, they're, they're not even second class citizens. They're like third class citizens. They, they'll never let, they'll never be considered American because they got to get the fuck out after a couple of years. Yeah. That came out of the George W. Bush administration. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Was, I mean, well, I get, and the, the segment I, I was going to make after that was that, like, I, I'm a big fan of moving. In, I've moved a lot in my life. I, 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 I ain't a fan of packing. Well, no, no. But I, I, like, I was born in New Jersey. We moved to Florida when I was a kid. And then once I became an adult, I lived in Arizona. And then I moved back to another part of Florida. 
then I moved to Oregon, and then I moved back to a different part of Florida, and then I moved to Massachusetts. And, I mean, so I, I've been around, you know, and and I've been in real progressive. Uh, Portland, Oregon, and Worcester, Massachusetts are pretty progressive, and Fort Myers, Florida, uh, pretty fucking conservative. Um, and um, I'll tell you, as like a middle class cisgendered white male guy i've well all these all these weird things that are terrible like have rarely affected me i've never had to get an abortion you know yeah I'm, i don't i'm not a, i don't that you never had to you're never gonna have to worry about it yeah i will never have to worry about that um, and even if i did if like a loved one did then like i have enough money that i mean i wouldn't i'm not saying i'd love to do this but i could figure, <laughs> i could figure it out you know i could figure out how to make that happen um, well, I'm, that's I'm, if, it, if that option's even available. Ever. I'm not trans, you know, and I've, I've, I never had to wait for the state to say I could enter into a gay marriage. Right? I've never, never have any of these things affected me, you know, and I, I'm kind of I'm much more yeah, cognizant I will of that say now. You, you have a privilege that's over me because, uh, and this is something that people will, this is a form of anti Semitism I get, I hear from people mm. uh, where they try to like, downplay anything against Jewish people or like, um, you know, the the Holocaust. Yeah. The way I always look at this is like, if they're coming after these people, they are coming after me next. Yeah. Well, I think that's a real. These motherfuckers are coming after me. I'm on the list. And and they will like um, progressive. I'm Jewish. And it doesn't even matter if I practice or not. I don't. I'm not religious at all. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They don't give a fuck. They don't care if I'm uh, fucking reading the Torah or eating a bagel. They don't give a shit. They know. And these motherfuckers, they gain power and they go after trans kids. They're going after trans adults. They're going to go after LGBT. They're going to go after different political. They're going to go. They don't stop. They don't stop. They no, start and they don't. They don't fucking stop. It's like those motherfuckers. They start. You know, they use the pandemic to get people on their side by like playing into like we're the ones that are free. We're the ones that don't yeah. push mask. The we're not part of the nanny state. But uh, now that I got you here, let me go on about why I think the school library shouldn't have these books in there because <laughs> right. they, you know it's like yeah. you know they or they use terms like woke, which is just like. It, it's like babe it's like sounds babyish like it doesn't it, or it yeah. makes it like comical sounding like oh it's oh this is woke it's like when you say you're a fucking racist piece of shit yeah like you know oh i saw a, a black woman on an ad for a movie coming out oh that's woke wait how's that woke it's like, yeah it's a black woman like oh, what the fuck it's tough i know i know that like it feels like, because I've, I've been in politics for a long time, like not like literally in politics, although, but, but like engaged in politics for a long time. Um, and it seems like um, when I am of the minority, it's exhausting to have to keep fighting for these things. You know, it's, it's, it's exhausting. Sometimes I'll go on Twitter or whatever and I'm like, you know, you feel like, well, I should say something about this, but it's exhausting. Uh, but it's then, also like, I, what, you get like 10 likes, you get 20 likes, and yeah. you're like, just fucking well, no, out and win. I, true, but I think that there's some, there is something to be said for the, the, the ebb and flow of conversation, you know what I mean? Of like, course. But, but when I'm in the, when I find myself in the majority, like in, when I was in Portland or in Worcester uh, or in Flagstaff, Arizona, I lived there for a little while, um, it was also exhausting because I felt like I always had to fight to keep the progress that I made or that we made, you know, like when I was in Portland and they finally agreed to like, stop arresting people for being homeless. Then you still had these motherfuckers show up at city council meetings all the time, bitching about the homeless. I mean, it was like, it never ends. It's just so. They just want them gone. They just want them gone. That's it. They don't want them to exist. Yeah, that was maybe a bad example, but it's like... No, I mean, like, it's not a bad example. Like, they literally want these people exterminated. Yeah, yeah. And that's, like, on anything. You know, it's like the trans thing. Like, what these sick fucks did was they they used sports as a way to get people into being anti-trans. It starts there. Like... 
I mean, I read, I read you get about people that too. saying like, "Oh, I support trans people, but I think it's wrong that a, a yeah. trans a woman can enter with other women. I think that's wrong, or vice versa." And it's like, it starts there. That's the, that's the plan. They use that as a way to get you in. Hey, now that we got you in, isn't it weird that they use the same bathroom too? Yeah, that's weird. Isn't it weird that they're allowed to yeah. live? And you're, you know sure. what I mean? It's to get, they use entry points. Yeah. And they use like, they use the pandemic as one to get people on to vote against their means. Like that's what happened in Virginia. Well, for a long time, I thought like, well, at least we don't have to fight for gay marriage anymore. You know, we don't have to worry about that one. But like I saw in Michigan the other day, all the Republican candidates running for attorney general in the state of Michigan, they were all like, no, we should be able to outlaw gay marriage. They they all agreed. All three They're of them gonna, they are said going they were gonna to they were gonna outlaw down. contraception. What? They were gonna outlaw contraception. That's insane. These Birth motherfuckers who are anti-abortion, <laughs> anti-choice, or they want to eliminate. Mm. And it's ridiculous. Come on, it's like the most hypocritical thing. People fuck. It's part of humanity. Mm. People, it's a literal function. You eat, you sleep, and then there's some people fuck. Yeah. And they it's know just, that, and these fucking sickos, like, they're sickos. They say, like, no contraceptions. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. I guess, that, but my broader point was that, like, it's, if you are, if you're a good person, and you believe in standing up for human rights, and for standing up for others, that you may not necessarily, you know, be a member of. Like, if you, if, if I think it's my obligation to stand up for trans kids. And if I think it's my obligation to stand up for people that immigrate to this country. And if I think it's my obligation to stand up, you know, for whatever, it's just exhaust, it's very exhausting, and, but you gotta do well, it. Well, I mean, you, know, it's, it's, you gotta do it, but at the same time, it's like at some point, the end of the day, unless if you are not any of those things or any mm-hmm. of the loved ones are not any of those things, at some point, and this is the problem sometimes with like liberal liberals in the United States and everything. Like mm-hmm. it's the whole like, well, we voted in Biden. Yeah, yeah. A bunch. It's like that the old work thing. Here's done. Like the work is done. I voted. Now I'm gonna go. And it's like, well, what about the midterms? Or what? Oh, if I have time? Or, yeah. or what right. about these measures? Or what do we do about this? You know, there's more so to it than that. But but the end of the day, like if you're all like you're. Uh, white heterosexual in this country and your kids are that and you don't have and you don't fall into any of those things you're probably going to be fine even yeah. when the, if the you know Nazis take over you'll be like yeah it was a weird couple of years well I don't know I mean, came I... back after a couple of bombings I'm glad everything kind of got back to normal a little bit you know what I mean like that that's um I th- no, I think you're right. Your original point was right. They don't stop. They it'll, don't. It'll, it'll eventually. They it'll eventually they tire not be pure you out because, in the end of the day, their goal is to tire you out. Because in the end of the day, their goal is to hit you over the head with a thousand things to the point where you just wake up and go, you know, what? I'm tired of the shit. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, unless you're like a card carrying socialist or commie or whatever that, or they find some tweets or whatever, you know what I mean. Yeah. You're probably gonna be okay in the end of the day, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's that old saying, that old thing from the, the what was it, the Nazis? That story, like, oh yeah, the first they like, came for the, the worker, the the unions or the socialists, and I did nothing, and then they right. went after the Jews and the gay people and the gyps, and I did nothing, and then eventually they went after me. That is true, but that's the yeah. point. They tire you out. They yeah. exhaust you, <laughs> mentally exhausting the point. You're like, I don't give a shit. I just want to go home and watch like Love is Blind or whatever. Mask Singer. Mask Singer. Oh, oh, Giuliani's on. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, the America's that's mayor. <laughs> worst thing. I, I was like, you got like that. It's kind of funny, actually, when you think about it. It's like they might as well just have Trump on. I mean, yeah. oh, I'm back. Well, Weird that the mask singer was a the the, the character was a pile of shit. <laughs> This is the back back half of a horse at a brony convention with a four inch <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I am moving. Uh, on, yeah, yeah. You know, hey, listen, you know, I've been there several times. We went there uh, once last year and then this year uh, to, you know, buy the house uh, or to close on it or whatever. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's a nice area. It's yeah, nice yeah. There. It's going to be cold as fuck. It's funny. That's why I was laughing. You said uh, it's, uh, oh, it's, you want to... it's like five degrees there. Yeah. I have a friend that's visiting the Denver area, a little north of there currently. And he said it was like negative five today or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to warm up to a crisp, a warm 16 tomorrow, I think. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the summers will be a little more pleasant. Oh, probably. Yeah. 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 But that's the fun about global warming or climate change <laughs> is that everything's getting hot. Like yeah. we were looking at a lot of houses in that area and a lot of houses, there's a good amount of houses did not have AC. Yeah. Yeah. They, when have, I lived, like, they have swum coolers. I lived in Portland and I lived in Flagstaff, Arizona. Very few places out there had air conditioning. It was crazy. Swamp, swamp coolers. <laughs> I'm like, I, I heard about, there's another word I think. It's called like evaporated air. But um, I first heard about them in Chico, California. A swamp cooler, which Chicken California gets like 120, 125. Yeah. Pounds. You need fucking AC. Swamp cooler ain't doing shit. Uh, <laughs> first of all, it sounds disgusting. Like, oh, what do you got? I have a swamp cooler. <laughs> I have a bog machine. <laughs> Spews moisture over. I guess it like cools air or some shit. And but like I, I was heard about it and they said like you can't hang anything near the vents because you're literally will destroy. Yeah. slowly destroy like artwork or anything because it oh. is like almost like a, a very fine mist. it's a mist yeah creating coolness uh you know who likes swamp coolers <laughs> yoda yeah oh yeah you know why and grogu and Gro- maybe grogu i don't know about grogu you know you reminds can't... him of dagobah <laughs> that, grogu is not from dagobah they're all from dagobah no, that's, right, yeah. <laughs> that's not a yoda planet that's just like a Yoda had like a time yeah, show. Yeah, he hit out there. Yeah, right. in by Count Dooku. <laughs> that was the ultimate, uh, the ultimate Sith trick. Um, yeah, Yoda was uh, signing up for a timeshare in uh, <laughs> Dagobah. Dagobah, yeah. <laughs> oh, foolish mistake I made that weekend. <laughs> Two weeks a year. Two weeks. A year. <laughs> <laughs> I got free breakfast the day I did. <laughs> well. Well, I think um, I think uh, the move the move will be good. It's always it's, it's fun to move. You know, it's, it's it's like a lot of work and headache, but it's always fun to move. And you'll have new yeah. representation in Congress. You'll have uh, Congresswoman Boebert. Oh, uh, she is and, not my Congressperson. Oh yeah, she's part of the Colorado contingent. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I know. I'm very excited about that. No, no, there's conservative parts. Of- I know. I'm just kidding. Oh, she's so lovable. She is. She's like, She's um, like a trampy uh, Ewok. <laughs> a, a, a guard, like a garbage pail kid come to life. Like, she's like, you know, when I was a kid and get the garbage pail kid packs, and I remember they got so popular at the store, it was like, you can only get two. Yes. Two yeah. packs. Very sad. And uh, I opened them up, and I got the same shitty card, and that's her. It's like uh, Stinky Bobert or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, G- gruesome Bo- uh, would be like Lauren Bober. What would be the garbage pail kid name of that? Like it would be like Lauren Booger or something. <laughs> Lauren Booger. <laughs> Lauren Booger Bert. Yeah, that would, that would be. Yeah. Hey, and the funny thing I always loved about the garbage pail kids was, and I think people forget this, every card had two different names. There was two different cards. They one like Adam Bomb would also be oh. like another name. It's funny because people remember like the original but they all had a secondary name yeah uh, and uh so we need to find out what lauren bobert's second name is. that's funny uh, yeah. husband showed dick to <laughs> minors that's her other that's perv her wife name. what perv wife yeah, perv perv yeah. <laughs> well all right so what what topic did we have coming up next when did we have was this we're gonna... well since we were talking about the uh R- ridiculous Republican uh, bullshit from Texas. Yeah. We're just going to talk about real quick uh, the universities thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Past because it's kind of like, okay, so real quick, what's the thing about the universities again? 
Well, it, it was, it's kind of, a, I'll shorten the story, but it's kind of a convoluted path there. And the, the basic idea was that we have a, a, a local university here, a state university. And uh, on TikTok, this great uh, TikTok user, uh, that Dinesh guy, I think his, I think his handle is that Dinesh guy. Um, he, he posts these things often where he kind of pokes at conservatives. Anyway, this, this conservative person who was posting anti-trans propaganda all over the university tried to bait some guy at the copy machine into throwing a fit, and he didn't. He's just like, look, you're trash. This is bigotry. I don't want any part of it. And she, she tried to claim oppression because the guy didn't want to make yeah. photocopies. Trying to act like he was going to get canceled. Like right. I, she's like, I got 64,000 followers. Yes. And he's so, like, I could care less. And so then that, that Dinesh guy's on Twitter and he has pretty good success in getting people, you know, held accountable. I thought that you, meant you were saying Dinesh to Sousa. I'm like, okay, oh, no, no. <laughs> This guy's, I, I think his name is Donish or it's Dinesh. Or is Donish. he the one that like, he, he was going after like a lot of Karens and shit and like. That used to be his thing. And I think now he mostly does like, like uh he was doing some pretty high level stuff. He did stuff with like a, um, a district attorney in Pennsylvania that was refusing to prosecute mask offenses and stuff. He's, he's a, and he's a funny guy. He's, he's very clever and his content is real engaging and everything. Anyway, he's on Twitter going after the president of University of North Texas saying, how can you tolerate this at your university X, Y, and Z? And I hopped on there and I was, and I, I he didn't reply to my comment, but I basically said like, you're barking up the wrong tree here. First of all, this president answers to a board and the board is all Trump supporters. It's like 12 Trump mega donors. None of them know anything about colleges, or universities. They all got put on this board because they were big Trump supporters and they give tons of like college money to people like Donald Trump Jr. to come give lectures and Ben Shapiro and this, that, and whatever. Milo Yiannopoulos and all these right. fucking people. It's like exactly. their money, all these kids' tuition. It's like I always thought that they try to like bait. And that was another thing, kind of like with the the right, what they would do over the years, besides like, you know, go after like trans kids in sports and things like yeah. that. They would go after college kids and say that colleges are actually create, taking away free speech. Yes. And it was like, these people, it, it, what it did was it masked the fact that one, these kids pay an enormous amount of money to go to these schools. And then you find out that a piece of shit like Milo Yiannopoulos is coming to the school to basically create a narrative that colleges are shit and quiet people when he's really there to bring the far right there yeah. and to say a bunch of racist, bigoted, uh, anti-trans, even though he's gay, he's gonna have homophobic things to say all kinds of horrible shit. And it's there just to bait kids. And the joke is that these fucking people get paid like a, a grip of money to do it. And that money is coming from these kids' tuition. Yeah. Well, that they, so they're paying. And these colleges are charging these kids on average, what is it, like 100K a year? It's, I mean, if you if that includes like room and board and a bunch of stuff, I mean, like you, you probably go to college for less, but the, your point's the same regardless of whether it's a hundred grand or ten grand. You're taking these a lot of money. Yeah, you're taking these kids' tuition money and you're funneling it into these radical right wing nutcases. And so I, my point was like, yeah, you can get the president fired or make him resign or whatever, but they're just going to get someone worse. You got to go after the board. The board is the the thing that hires and supervises the president, and the president answers the, to the board. So you're kind of barking up the wrong tree. I don't think anybody listened to me. I don't think anybody really cared because- Well, it's you know, easy cares? to be like, I'm going to go after the president, right? Because yeah. it's like, that's, he's the face, but you're right. He's, it's only so much, that, in the end of the day, it is this board. It's kind of like the same thing. Like we have the superintendent and the principals yeah. here. But if your fucking school board is filled with a bunch of anti-mass nut jobs who think right. that the earth is 6,000 years old, <laughs> guess what? Yeah. Those more educated, smart people that are in, that earn these positions that weren't voted in by a bunch of knuckle draggers right um they can't do their job correctly exactly you you could like be rightfully pissed off of the superintendent and get him or her fired but they're just going to be replaced with someone even worse because it's the board that's a problem it's not the super it's i mean it may also be the superintendent 
it may all the president may legitimately be a horrible person. I don't know. But it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because the, the board is what's controlling it. And so uh, regardless, it's the uh, real quick uh, yeah. before we move on to the next thing. What's funny about that specific video though, that girl was she almost it's like she, well, besides putting out a bunch of anti-trans shit and being an, uh, just a straight up college Republican shithead, yep. uh, she, she thought she was doing a reverse Karen on this guy where yeah. it's like, I have you on camera. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. Because he was in the right. Yeah. Who, who's going who, who's gonna to get mad at him? A bunch of online trolls and bots? I mean, I guarantee you half her followers are bots. Like, who cares? Like, oh no, horrible people are going to be mad at me. I don't give a shit. Well, like, and, that guy was great. And he handled it perfectly. I mean, like, you can even have pretty horrible opinions, but if you handle it well, then nobody's going to find it interesting. Nobody's going right, to find it. Right, those Karen videos engaging. are funny. We laugh at them because those people lose their shit. Yeah. In them. And they act like but nut jobs. They're not, th this. Yeah, I admit the camera was like uh, it's the overreaction or the histrionics or whatever. That's the entertaining. That's the yeah, like the part. girl pretending to be the man, turning around pretending to be the manager or was the manager. Yeah, was probably hilarious. was the manager. That was a joke because she's probably the only one who works there. Yeah. Uh, and the woman then screaming about that it goes against her hippo rights or whatever. Yeah. That was hippo funny. Law. That's why yeah, this law. guy is one was not wrong at all. The girl was horrible who was videotaping him, and. He, yeah, he handled it great because it's like, yeah. I'm right, you're he, an idiot, yeah, you're, he, a, you're a hateful bigot. Like, yeah, it was it was it was perfect. But uh, and he was oh, and, and I think she went after him too because he was wearing a mask and she wasn't. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I think it had something to do with that too. Like he didn't want to be around her. It's it is weird. I I I remember going to college as kind of a young kid where I was like really developing like how I felt about shit. And I remember these like anti-gay pastors used to come and preach like in the square. And it just felt really good to like, you know, flip them off or to yell up an obscenity at them as I walked by. Um, and I think there is something useful about having an abhorrent person around that you can protest <laughs> for lack of i don't think they should get paid any money to be there but like i don't know I mean, there's, there's some utility out well, of having that debate the the right right wing institutions and like that they've been going after the colleges for years because they yeah. know that that's where a lot of kids get influenced and they learn things that the public schools weren't allowed to teach it's that book learning and yeah you know like they read like the people's history of the united states now and they learn yeah. oh wait yeah. we, you know the Founding fathers were not cartoon characters. They right. were like slave owning people who tax dodgers tricked people into paying instead of paying taxes to the king, they pay taxes to them. <laughs> that yeah. was the trick. That was the big trick in the United States was how do we get people to pay stop paying taxes to the king and pay taxes to us? I mean Yeah. Were you called independence and all that stuff? Sure, whatever. The end of the day, though, guess what? Person's still paying taxes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was like the joke in the end. It's like, you're still paying taxes, buddy. Yeah. Well, yeah. But it is kind of, and, and you can see, I don't know if this was when we were going to talk about this in particular. Oh, um, God. This is like another one. Uh, Rittenhouse, right? Yeah. I was going to say, you could definitely see uh, UNT or any university in any state paying Kyle Rittenhouse to lecture or to give a speech or to give a talk or whatever. Because um, apparently uh, Murder Hog is now starting some sort of media accountability project, uh, which is just, it's just such a grift. I mean, he, his big thing, like on Twitter, I kept seeing people say, Rittenhouse is going to sue Whoopi Goldberg. And all he needs is he's a bunch of money to he, hire a lawyer. <laughs> basically, it's just a money grab to get trick people into giving money so he can go after all the people that call him murderer. Yeah. I mean, dude, look, you're a fucking murderer. And if you look, here's the thing. If you had if you had a case, lawyers would be beating down your door because they get a cut. You don't need 
to, to raise money to hire an attorney for stuff like this. The attorneys I mean, come uh, to you. I want to I want to find the clip. Like, <laughs> it's really just. I mean, it's just hysterical. It's just so Sorry. crazy. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Give me one sec. Sorry. Oh, here we go. It, well, you know, it said Rittenhouse, it's time to hold the media accountable. And I tweeted, if only there was a thing that would hold people who murder other people accountable. <laughs> uh, let me see if I could. Oh, here we go. For coming on tonight. I, don't, I can't think of many people who've been at receiving end of this much sinister lying from so-called news organizations oh my God. as you have. <laughs> Poor kid. How are you going to respond? Well, Tucker, thank you for having me. Um, oh, me and my team have decided to Such launch the Media voice. Accountability Project as a tool to help fundraise and hold the media accountable for the lies they said and deal with them in court. Yeah. Interesting. So the idea <laughs> is interesting. maybe like the Covington Catholic kids. It's the same people, you actually. Will be suing news organizations that maliciously lie about people who are in the news. Is that the plan? Yes, sir. We're going to be holding them accountable, Tucker. <laughs> so does that so, oh, so that means, I guess, thanks to Kyle Rittenhouse, we can go after like Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. Yeah, I, I wonder if Tucker was doing any mental math at the time. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. So you're going to sue. Well, it's like I would <laughs> love to see Kyle Rittenhouse try to sue Whoopi Goldberg. I think that'd be really funny. I mean, the kid. First of all, the kid has nothing to offer anyone. I mean, no. he, he has the he his he has no stage presence at all. Yeah, he's, um, he's like what eighteen? He's a literal no nothing. He's being told to say whatever. And the idea that oh, he said that I, I don't know if it was not he said basically like. In a longer clip, he said, "Like, well, I was found innocent among a uh, jury of my peers, so you can't call me a murderer." And it's yeah. like, "Yeah, we can. We could call you a murderer. Yeah, you he's murdered a, those people. Maybe he's not familiar with with how the world works or whatever. I mean, like, pe people what? say stuff all the time. I mean, like, you know, I find it really funny. You know, like people, um, you know, they always say like the right wing people in general. They always say go after people who like." Like this generation, they always want to win a medal or whatever. But man, this kid is like the example of what these people like. He expects everyone to like kowtow to him, bow to him. It's like, dude, yeah, you murdered people. You have nothing yeah. else to offer. The fact that you're free is a uh, like just shows you our system sucks. Your example of that, our unfair our judicial system is. And depending on the state you live in, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah I know it's funny. The Tucker Cross is the mental gymnastics. Like, wait, I've said some really terrible shit in one yeah. time. Me having you alone is kind yeah. of a, on his. I could yeah. probably, I, someone could sue me for that. Like, yeah. like the victim, I mean, there's still a living victim of him. Yeah. That guy should. I'm so that guy should sue the shit out of Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm surprised he hasn't just for like because the, the burden of proof is so different in civil court, you know. I mean, maybe he's waiting for Kyle Rittenhouse to make a few bucks. He's uh, already I mean, has. He's yeah. made a ton. I mean, what, what are you waiting for? Like when he has a show on Fox or yeah. running for Congress? I mean, I don't know what's going on with that. I find that really weird. I wonder if he was paid off. Maybe he got a ton of money. Hey, go away. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mentioned that on Twitter the other day, not about Kyle Rittenhouse, but about Ginny Thomas. And it, it actually was one of my tweets that got like a bunch of, I think it got like three or 400 likes. Ooh. And I was like, right. you know, I don't, I, for the life of me, I can't figure out why, like, look, there's enough evidence that Ginny Thomas, Clarence Thomas's wife, uh, did some support and organization for that January 6th riot now i know that they've kind of debunked the fact that she wrote a check for buses or anything but like she she organized it she was a big part of it and afterwards she apologized Ginny thomas is the, 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 yeah clarence thomas's 
wife, the Supreme and Court Clarence Justice. Thomas is a one of Supreme, the nine Supreme Court judges. Yes. And I was like, I'm stunned that no one has sued her in civil court that, that got injured on that day. Even if they just yeah, like, like any of the cops. Yeah. Like even if they just like or anyone, you know, like your window got broken, your car got damaged, or any, it doesn't matter, whatever happened, you know, like you can't tell me that no one has thought like I should sue Judy Thomas. It. Yeah, I mean, I guess people, good normal people, don't just randomly sue people. But like this is this is certainly a not a normal situation. I don't know. You know? Like I said, yeah. I don't know why there is not a civil suit. There yeah. was one victim that lived, and yeah. from Kyle Rittenhouse, he had his. He's permanently damaged. His arm it will never fully heal. Right, right. Uh, and it, it's all because of that kid shooting him. And, you know, the whole joke, the whole argument was like, oh, well, he had a gun. Well, if the argument is that Kyle Rittenhouse was defending himself, this guy, this guy was the third person that got shot by Rittenhouse after Kyle Rittenhouse has already murdered two people. This guy's not allowed to defend himself? Yeah. I mean, if you want to have a case, you could say that, like, this guy was trying to defend himself from Rittenhouse. To me, that should have been enough alone to lock Rittenhouse up because this kid <laughs> shot up. Like, it, it's, it's disgusting. The fact that this yeah. kid, that Tucker Carlson has this fucking, this, uh, what do they call that? Uh, al- alcohol fetal syndrome or whatever. Oh, fetal alcohol syndrome, yeah. This kid who's like the fucking poster boy for yeah. that. Like, it's disgusting. It's like it, like it's a psyop that that this kid is yeah. on all the time. It's like, and you know, there's people who are like, yeah, you know, this just pisses off the libs. Having having yeah. this kid on, uh, yes, I mean, nothing pisses off the libs than a unrepentant murderer. <laughs> <laughs> nothing gets those libs in a tizzy than having an unrepentant murderer saying that you're not allowed to call him a murderer. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, but you know what's really crazy? Hmm. Um, yeah, Putin. Oh, geez. This, yeah, this is a story that's kind of unfolding. I mean, I was watching the news right up until when we started recording. Well, I just, I just saw a tweet 53 minutes ago. Yeah. Of, uh, well, I just looked now, but it's from 53 minutes ago. Yeah. It says Ukraine Central Military Command reports Russia bombed several airports, including Kiev, Borsalu. Nick, I'm not even going to say these names. Yeah. Russia has apparently bombed the main airport in the capital of Ukraine. Right. That's what I. It says I'm on the trending topics on Twitter now. Explosions uh, in Western Ukraine. Now realize it's daytime over there. So yeah. I, uh, yeah. It's really- so. Ukraine. Uh, what did Biden? What did uh, Putin say? His justification for going there now? He uh, Nazis. Is that what he said? Yeah. Well, he said it's. It, it is. I will admit this is a little more complicated than it first seems. In a lot of ways, the 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 my the core truth of it though is that the Ukraine is a, a sovereign nation, um, and Russia is invading it, and that's that's so good. That's that's illegal and it's immoral and and it's been a sovereign things. nation for how long now? Oh, like oh, like fifty years or something. Well, you know? since the, the the well, wait, was Ukraine part of the Soviet Union or no? Ukraine, yeah, actually, Chernobyl is technically in the the Ukraine. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, like I I always whenever I hear Chernobyl, I think Russia, but Chernobyl is actually in the Ukraine. In well, the I think you think USSR because it was. Yeah. A Soviet Union thing, but yeah. So okay. the, the USSR broke apart. You're right. I guess that would have been like in the 90s or whatever. Early 90s. So, yeah, 30 years ago or whatever. Yeah, over 30 um, years ago. So it's been its own. I mean, yeah, they have elections. It was propaganda and, about like, oh, there's Ukrainians that want to be back with Russia. It's well, I, mean, I think there are. You know, I mean, I I, uh, I heard that some of them. It's like because those were people that lived there when it was part of the USSR. And they were Russians. But like, let's just say, yeah, I mean, like, it. this is a clumsy analogy. There's people that in the United States that want, like, states to separate. Right, exactly. There's people who want, like, 
uh, Canada to be taken over. You know, like there's people who want poor, like yeah, all states want that. So of course you're going to find people in the Ukraine that want Russia to take over. That just it's if, like if Texas voted to become its own country and uh, they seceded from the nation, I would leave Texas and go live in America, right? You know, but like, <laughs> because I can, you know? But well, like- so funny when you say it like that. Yeah, <laughs> but, but like not everyone could. And so there might be a ton of people living in like Amarillo that still want to be part of America, but they're stuck in Texas. And then America would be like, well, we're, we're taking back Amarillo, you know, and, and like, you can see how it'd be complicated or whatever, but none of that really matters because the Ukraine has been the Ukraine for a long time and they have elections and they have, you know, they're, they're their own thing, you know? And so, I just think it's, uh, so like Putin's the thing about like, oh man, let me see if I can find it. It was like a direct quote about the Nazi fying of, uh, of like the Ukraine. Ukraine. Well, like there are some like they they and I think some of it's propaganda, but like some of the people in the Ukraine are pretty far right wing, you know. I mean, like I, I don't but know. the far right in the United States is in line with Putin. Yeah, that's I guess that's the real complicated part is that like that's why it's hysterical. And there's uh my dad actually told me this earlier. This whole bullshit about the not the yeah I mean there's Nazis fucking everywhere Jeez. right even, even if even if the Ukraine uh, were full of Nazis it still doesn't mean that Russia should be able to roll in there and my dad uh, wrote there are about four hundred thousand Jews in Ukraine they are not they are not Nazis as Putin said the UK <laughs> president is half Jewish yeah I mean it's just uh, it's just disgusting that he's saying that while he's invading and everything when it's like it's a known fact that the discuss the the equivalent of nazis alt-right in this country fully are in line with putin yeah it's, it's, supporting him. it is so, so i guess that means putin's gonna invade us because of the all the fucking nazis that love him here well you see on um you see on um social media and, and whatnot all these republic they're, they're like so confused because all these republicans they hate joe biden and they're real, they, they love Putin, but they also hate Russia. I mean, it's just such a confusing mess, you know, like I saw uh, Tom Cotton today, I think, that, that idiot from, well, allegedly from Missouri. Isn't he the fucking guy who like went to Russia not long ago for like some weird shady shit? Uh, I think that was Ron not Tom Johnson. Cotton. Yeah, Ron Johnson. Yeah. This is Tom Cotton. And he was like, like saying that Joe Biden needed to be tougher on Russia. And, but he's also like come out at other times and said like that Putin is smart. I don't, it's just so confusing. Did Trump say out. about Putin recently? He said something that like sounded like he was, what a great, amazing genius yes. Putin is. He's like, Putin is so smart and, and savvy and this is a great idea. All but, tastes like marmalade. <laughs> but it's just so, it's so bizarre. I mean, like, look, all of this goes back to in 2016, the, the, the Republicans had been super anti-Putin and super anti-Russia. Yeah, I mean, Russia. even from like John McCain, yeah. who like when he was running for president, would have all kinds of what they call Russia phobia, yep. trying to find all kinds of incidents. There was like something in the Ukraine and John McCain tweeted, we're all Ukrainian now, we're all this. And it was like anti-Russia, Anything with Russia was like, yes. they, they were, and it made sense because the far right, the right wing in this country, hate Russia regardless of the Soviet Union or not, because they will always correlate them with communists. Yeah. Even though whoever runs Russia, there's nothing communist about them. Right. Anything it's like more libertarian than anything. Um, so you go from that, and you go for like decades of just like. The Reds, the Ruskies, all the yeah. anti-Russia propaganda coming out of the Republican Party, so like fucking since fucking World War II, if not predating that, since this freaking Bolshevik or whatever the the revolution in the twenties. I mean, like going back decades, Russian fear, all this stuff. The Republicans they pushed it, 
the, 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 like everything, they ran elections on it. The freaking McCarthy, uh, McCarthyism, yeah. all Republicans, all that, it's all the right wing. But and in then, 20, 20, 2016 is when it changed. Yeah, it, it starts to change. And then all of a sudden it's like really weird. You got Trump and it's like, that's odd. He's got some real ties. But then you see more politicians and more Republicans. And now it's almost like these guys, well, one, they don't want Biden to succeed in anything. Yeah. But it's not even that they don't want Biden to succeed. It's almost like they are rooting for Putin. Well, they're rooting, they're rooting for Putin. They're rooting, rooting for Putin. Mine. That's a good one. Well, Thank it started you, with Paul, Paul Manafort was doing oh, a ton yeah, of yeah that's a weird shit there he was doing a ton of business over there and then he came back and trump hired paul manafort and then like five minutes later the republicans made one single change in their platform in 2016 and they had the same platform as they did in 2012 except one single thing they took out protection for the ukraine yeah. That's the only thing they changed. And you it was like had this... uh, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, one of the uh, special guests of CPAC, yeah. super yeah. super lefty Tulsi Gabbard. Oh my yeah. god, such an ally! Oh my god, totally not she, a Russian plan. She came out and said Ukraine should not be allowed to join NATO, and I'm like that's such an odd thing for an American to right. say. <laughs> like, listen, I'm, you want I, more? I, I'm anti, I'm anti war and all this. I don't want anything to happen. This is really, this shit like does not sit well. My biggest fear about all this is that I think there's a, a one of the parties in this main second, the main party, second party in this country is backing Putin. Yeah. That's really weird. It's really strange. Cool. Kind of and... scary. I mean, like, imagine, like, uh, if even though the Republicans claim the Democrats did it anyway, even though they voted for everything. Imagine like when we went into a war with Iraq and you had like Joe Biden back then talk about how great Saddam was, there, yeah. was a leader. Same thing. Like Hillary Clinton or any of, the, like any of the leading Democrats at the time. Just the speaker that, uh, you know, the leader of the Democratic Party coming out and talking about how, what a great, brilliant tactician Saddam Hussein is. I mean, like that would be, It'd be insane. It's like, crazy. I don't like. I, <laughs> well, I mean, the whole thing's ridiculous. It, 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 oh, here's this is a really good one. I, I just I really didn't want to play yeah. Tucker Carlson again, but man, this clip, this clip is okay. Oh my god, this is long. All right, I'm not playing this whole thing. But yeah. oh, shut up, shut up, you bow tie freak. Um, he goes. He tweets out, why do Democrats want you to hate Putin? Has Putin shipped every middle class oh, yeah. job in your town in Russia? Did he manufacture a worldwide pandemic that wrecked your business? Is he teaching your kids to embrace racial discrimination? Is he making fentanyl? Uh, I told you the right one has this much fentanyl. It's really weird. Does he eat hot dogs? No, does he eat dogs? <laughs> does he eat hot dogs? No, he does he eat just dogs. Not hot dogs. No, no, not hot dogs. Does he eat dogs, which is like a jab at like yeah. Asian countries. Right, right. Um, which is weird because Russia's in Asia. So um, yeah. Yeah. I wrote again, the right wing in the USA is aligned with Putin's Russia. We were yelled at by a fake leftist for six years telling us that Trump GOP Putin connection was a crazy conspiracy when in fact it was right in front of uh, our face, yeah. all of us to see. This is not a fucking conspiracy. These fucking people are politically aligned. It, it, this is a, see, the way I always looked at the fascists in this country is that this isn't a, a, a just a domestic issue. This is an international threat. Yeah. There is a a fascist movement, far right fascist movement that's been around the globe in Europe, in in Russia. Steve Bannon's been trying to build it up yeah. in other countries. Like this shit has roots, and it is a global threat. It's it, it, it's kind of frightening. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've seen it for years now. I've seen an online presence of it. Uh, my Instagram from just posting like any Trump, yeah. do all kinds of weird shit, and it's always been as the kids would say, sus. Yeah. Uh, but fucking Tucker Carlson, what a weird, what a weird. Again, it's like imagine if Tucker Carlson was in two thousand three was like, are you? Si 
did Saddam Hussein take away, I mean, just take away and be like, Saddam Hussein ship every middle class job in your town in Russia? No, it is bizarre. He was a fucking cheerleader for the Iraq war. He didn't give a fuck. He was a huge cheerleader for the Iraq war. This is bizarre. He's not anti-war at all. Yeah. He's a fucking warmonger. It's just for some reason, like, I don't even know, like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, he, is the United States going to go to war? Like, what is going to happen here? I don't, you know, I've been trying to think of that. I, I heard, and again, like, a lot of this stuff has been happening, is currently happening, you know, so I, I uh, this is kind of like, I'm, I'm doing it a little bit from memory. I heard Poland, just like Poland or Lithuania, one of those NATO countries just recently um, said that we, we need to get the Ukraine in NATO immediately, which would mean that we'd be obligated to fight to 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 militarily fight Russia in defense of of the Ukraine. Well, the problem with Russia is they have a stockpile of nuclear missiles that yeah. are ours. It's like they still they got they got they got like oil money. Yeah, and then nuclear missiles. Well, I think I mean they could they could use those. I, I suppose I think that. Um, that uh, I don't I don't know what the U.S. would do. I, my guess is that the U.S. probably does have some pretty interesting capabilities electronically, and could shut down parts of Russia's internet access or freeze monetary funds. Oh, they have all the they have all those cool like tattooed uh, uh, hats yeah. in Russia. Well, they, yeah, they will be a pen they, like. You'll go to the, uh, the Walmart and all there will be are Pepe memes that you can purchase. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what's for dinner, Dad? Pepe memes again. <laughs> Pepe memes. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't know. This is so weird because I the Twitter, I haven't read it, read the articles. I mean, but they're saying that there's a full-scale invasion of the Ukraine. But I think the big problem with that is that if if Russia goes into the Ukraine, then like the same arguments they made to go into the Ukraine could be made to go into, you know, Lithuania or Poland or, you know, any number of states that used to be part of the Soviet Union or whatever. Right. Um, and I, I don't know where it goes from here. I mean, like, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's I mean, when a country, and not when a country, I mean, okay, so like, What's the difference between us going to Iraq and the difference between and the difference between Russia going into Ukraine? Well, one of the big and this this sounds like simple, but like one of the big differences is that like we're like kind of a uh, conceived as like a white Christian nation, and Iraq is a, a brown. Islamic nation, you know, I mean, they're, they're very different ethoses. And when Russia goes into the Ukraine, they're both kind of similar. You know, that's, that's well, one difference. I mean, like, another one is that like- The end goal, I mean, like, cause the end goal is for Russia to literally just take over Ukraine and basically literally take it over. Like, yeah. it get, and um, again, their oil, yeah, uh, which is ironic is <laughs> you know, the thing with, and uh, also, I guess their roots and stuff, like you know, open access to stuff that Ukraine was preventing Russia from having full access to. But yeah. if Russia runs the Ukraine, they'll have access to that. I think for a long time too, the USSR Soviet Union was this big, they were like the the a co-equal power, you know. Um, and now Russia's Dickville. They're they're like not even in the top 10 economies. They're like no, that man. was like the joke when uh well, sorry. Uh, that was like the joke about um, Trump would always be like, well, why isn't Putin in the G7? Like, yeah, G8. it was the top seven nations, dickhead. And like, yeah, but it was odd that the president of the United States was so concerned about Russia's well, president. Of he wanted him. them in there. And remember, he wanted to disband NATO and he wanted to kick he wanted his ally, the, the NATO allies, to pay more dues and stuff. I mean, he was he was wrecking. Yeah, our... it, it was weird. It was like he was a like uh, a compromised. It was. I mean, you could, okay. if you had written that in a novel or in a, a movie treatment, the producers would have come back and said, "You got to 
you got to make this a little more subtle. This, this is like people this don't act ridiculous. this way. Yeah, this yeah. is so obvious. But like, it, but the joke is, it is so mm-hmm. obvious in real life. And people, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's like it's amazing in movies. People are critical. They're critical in movies. Yeah. They'll complain. They would. They, it's no joke. They would totally complain about it. They would find everything fucking wrong in a movie. They'll pinpoint every fact and everything like that. But the shit happened in real life. Based on whatever the politics yeah, of that person right is, and all of a sudden they have like a blinders on, and all those important facts and figures and story holes don't mean shit anymore. Well, well here's a fact: like we had a guy who was president of the United States for four years, who was literally was a puppet of Putin, who's like he went on TV and said, "Rush, if you're listening," and then the next day, yeah. they did exactly all that. I mean, it is fucking weird. It so is weird. weird. And then you get all these people who like try to spread propaganda to like call us crazy for pointing out the obvious. Yeah. I think Russia mainly, I mean, like, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but like, if you look at Russia right now, habitable Russia is very small. Most of Russia is like uninhabitable. It's like tundra and shit, you know, like rock hard frozen wasteland. The, if you were to like look at, <laughs> overhead like from a satellite russia at night only a very small part of it is lit up ukraine is probably a really nice geographic yeah, place someone for was pointing out there's like lots of things in ukraine there's like beautiful yeah. buildings and like yeah i don't know what to say i mean this is kind of scary i don't know where it's gonna go but like yeah. okay i guess the only difference was like what was the united states intention was to never like it wasn't like it was going to make Iraq the <laughs> first state of the United States. I mean, what they what the United well, States in Iraq was absolutely fucking evil and disgusting, but and criminal. The people who did that should be in jail, and not celebrated. George W. Bush, Dick Cheney. No, no, I agree. What about but this? Is like. This is different, and it, and it, 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 there's similarities to it, but there's different because this is literally about like seizing it, and yeah. it'd be like if we invaded Mexico or Canada, and it's yeah. I think that's the other Ontario's difference. now. Ontario's ours now. In in Iraq, whether or not it was true, and I, I I don't think it was true the way it was sold to us. But the first Iraq War, the first Persian Gulf War, it was basically like Iraq has invaded Kuwait. Yep. And we need to go liberate Kuwait. That sounds like, no, I'm not saying it was, but it sounds oh, it was noble. Shit, but yeah. But you know what I mean? It sounds like, hey, we're standing up for our It sounded like Kuwait. a mission. It sounded like a mission. It was like oh. very quick. The war was right. like a month long. A lot of people still got fucked up from that. Oh, yeah. People downplayed it. it but let me tell you, I don't know how you're, you're, you're older than me, but when I was a kid, that war was so marketed. Oh, it yeah. Was like, Trading cards. It was constant. Oh, CNN. Yeah, had that Joe like, Adeline, yeah. Everyone. It was. Yeah, CNN got big because it does a storm, yeah. Up, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I was in. I was in college you know when the first desert war happened. The biggest joke about that war was the CNN got big of it. There was no footage of it. They didn't want yeah. to show shit. <laughs> well, then the, sec- the second Gulf War was the weapons of mass destruction bullshit. Well, it was, it was a reaction to 9/11, and they were able to trick people. Yeah. And again, in a movie, if someone, if you said like the, the bad guy is invading a different country, people would complain, say that's too ham fisted, that's ridiculous, right. too far fetched, it's too on the nose. In real life, there was a, a supposedly uh, Osama bin Laden caused 9 11, and they yeah. decided to work with a totally different guy that had nothing to do with any of it. Uh, well, I don't like, like, You've said, and like I've said, I don't know where this is going, but I'll bet you when we get off this recording, uh, I'm going to put on the news, and I'll bet you it looks grim. I'll bet you they're doing live shots there. It's it's like you said, broad daylight in, in the Ukraine right now, and um, uh, it's it'll be it'll be real interesting. I don't I don't I think Joe Biden's got to do the maximum sanctions that he can. Um, this and is then, the. This is happening right now in oh. D.C. He says, my brother is neighbors with the Russian embassy in D.C. Protest is holding Ukraine flags of start gathering outside. Another yeah. view from outside of brother's apartment. Protest is in front of Russian embassy. I mean, they've already, uh, oh, my God. Well, I just saw footage of a dead kid in Ukraine. Jesus. 
I mean, like, listen, you know, this is, the, I, I want to point out that I've seen footage like that from the Iraq war and every other yeah. atrocity in the United States. This is, the United States is not innocent in any way whatsoever. But this, see, the thing I find bizarre, uh, the thing I find discomforting, besides the fact that this is horrible, is that there is a weird, very strange, and needs to be investigated. Yeah, element in the compromised US. Compromised politicians and media figures in the United States that are aligned with a potential enemy adversary, if not enemy of not the country. Potential. He is an adversary. Yeah, yeah he's is. an adversary yeah. of the country that they're supposed to serve. And it's like they get and they make it more obvious every day. Yeah. And it's like they're getting away with it. But that was a joke. We made jokes about when Tulsi was running for yeah, it was president funny. Yeah. The Democratic Rift. You said that she got all her fucking marching orders from Moscow, right? Right, yeah. Well, here we are. I mean, like, I like this is like I said, this does not get the like this is does not take the United States off the hook. I don't want the United States going to war. I don't know what the hell is going. I just find it really weird when you have a when a big portion of the United States is politician elected officials are like celebrating today yeah like like i said eric larson tweeted uh he tweeted this thing he said that uh he's a famous comic artist stuff like that but he said at this point i'm convinced that russia could bomb the u.s and a portion of the country would stand up no blood yeah probably depending on the if it was like a blue state hell yeah hell yeah ben shapiro would be on the next day and he would come up with some insane word jujitsu to like yeah. fucking no, validate right. the death of like three million Americans or whatever because of Russia. He'd be like, well, yeah, mm. did we actually need I don't know, whatever. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, yeah. Did we need the uh whole <sighs> coast of the United States? <laughs> uh, uh, Jesus. What new potential uh, real estate in uh West Virginia, ocean yeah. property. Ocean from property. Ocean. You gotta look at the positives here, folks. Fucking Lex Luthor. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. That was always his, like that was his uh, a real estate scheme. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then like that stupid movie, Superman F- F- Returns or Forever. What was that shit? That uh, was- Superman oh. Four: Quest for Peace. No, not that one. That was brilliant. I'm talking about the one that came out. It had the uh, Brandon Ralph as him. Oh yeah. Out, like, 2006, and that. Had again Lex Luthor with another real estate scheme, like yeah. where it was like yeah. that terraforming. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was just like this horrible, spiky, unlivable, like rock. Right. It was like, who's living on this shit? Like those rock that was monsters all Parker from Parker Posey, right? What? Parker Posey was in yeah. that one. Yeah, she's awful, great. Awful movie. <laughs> yes, Terrible. yeah. The movie sucked. Um, just like the atrocities I'm saying here. Right. <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I don't know where it's gonna go. This is like scary. It really it is. is. It is. Yeah. Uh, do you know who Hassan Piker is? I don't think so. We talked about him. He's like a a Twitch streamer guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he had this thing where he was saying like, "Oh, Russia's not gonna invade. Russia's not gonna invade." Whatever. And people were calling him out. Sure. And uh, there was a joke with like. It was a video that got out of him where he was like going to buy like a two hundred thousand dollar car or whatever. And yeah, people give him shit because he's like an online leftist and all that. And here he is living in this expensive house with a car, whatever. He lives right. in the United States. I don't give a fuck what your political leanings are. You buy a two hundred thousand dollar car, you're a fucking capitalist. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, I wrote. Uh, he said, "This is the hill. This was from six days ago. So this is the hill I'll die on. Russia cannot launch an urban counterinsurgency war in a neighboring country with 44 million people, with or without NATO support. This is why I have been saying he won't invade Ukraine, not because of anyone else. He's a bad person, not a mad one." And then uh, someone wrote, "I think he might be a mad one." But yeah. I wrote, "Gets in two hundred thousand dollar car and drives away." <laughs> 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 oh shit. I mean, like, at the end of the day, the guy's a Twitch streamer. Like, he has yeah, some yeah, I'm not looking like that. 
but it's like come on stop fucking idolizing these people they're just like actors or anything else like he's made a group of money and you know what like I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to get into yeah. it. I just think it's <laughs> like people put too much weight on some of these people. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, but man, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to see if there's like any other updates. Like, I mean, this shit's going to wait. Hold on. Here we go. President Biden. Uh, this was three hours ago. The prayers of the world are with the people of Ukraine tonight as they suffer an unprovoked and unjustified attack by Russian military forces. President Putin has chosen a predominant uh, premeditated war that will bring a catastrophic loss of life and human suffering. Mm. Uh, I don't know, one person wrote, drift the unvaccinated, like <laughs> the <start of> war, <laughs> you know, stupid. Uh, Russia alone is responsible for the death and destruction this attack will bring and the United States and its allies and partners will respond in the United in a decisive way. The world will hold Russia accountable. I don't know. Jeez. This person keeps tweeting, Angela, bill camino she does like these horrible dances she mm-hmm. was always post like anti-trump and like this is my anti-trump dance and it was just, i don't know what this woman is but she wrote she just keeps saying under all the things he writes draft the unvaccinated <laughs> <laughs> so stupid like I, I don't want to go to war no. i don't think a war see the problem with the the iraq war was it was a bullshit war it was a bullshit war that was a lie. Yeah, yeah. It should have been easily contained. It should have, it should have, it was sold as a desert storm too. And it ended up becoming an out of control, catastrophic uh, disaster that lasted decades and will never, it will always haunt us forever in yeah. some way, some form. And, um, but this is scarier because this is, an army that actually has nukes. Yeah. You know, we were told that Saddam was a bad guy who had nukes. He had no nukes. Right. He didn't have any. Nothing. You know, it was to the point where, like, remember they would send them the UN, whatever, <laughs> they would yeah. send them these people. And then it got out like, yeah, they don't really have them. They're like, yeah, shut up. Like, that was a bullshit. Like, they were like, okay, we'll see if they have any and we'll decide. The Bush administration was going in no matter what. Yeah, they yeah. Didn't fuck what it was. Uh, but this is um, this is kind of frightening. Yeah, I'm uh, looking. I'm, I'm curious to see what we we discover. I in the think morning. it's time to play the clip from Seinfeld. <laughs> um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't think so. Oh man, this is so good. Here we go. Let's see if I can find it. This is the uh, episode where uh, Kramer and Newman are playing Risk. And oh, okay. uh, they wanted Seinfeld to be like Switzerland or something. And Seinfeld didn't want, like, he did, they were going to leave the board game there. And then it ends right, with right. them on the subway playing the game, which doesn't seem like a stable place for a board game. I can't think it's always noise. Or is it because I've built a stronghold around Greenland? I've driven you out of Western Europe and I've left you teetering on the brink of complete annihilation. I'm not yet. I still have armies in the Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the Ukraine is? It's a sitting duck, a road apple. The Ukraine is weak. It's <laughs> I think it's time to put the herd on Ukraine. Do not say Ukraine weak. Yeah, well, we're playing a game here, pal. Ukraine is came to you. How about I take the little Boris? Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, that's the best. That was like possibly one of the funniest things ever. Oh, yeah, they're like on the subway playing here. Then there's like this yeah. old Ukrainian man with like one of his hats. <laughs> Well, only that man was there. Yeah. Well, they say, and I guess I'll kind of end my Ukraine thoughts on this. They say that um, going into the Ukraine is not like a, a walk in the park. It's a big place with a lot of people, and they don't all want to be part of Russia. You know, it's they have tanks too. They have trucks and guns, and it's it'll be it, it'll get well, bloody, it's be I think. ugly because these are 
big countries and it's going to attract other countries. And that's why they say this is the kind of scary shit that starts world wars. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to start a world war, but it is mm. definitely a frightening thing. It we is. have children that are young. Yeah. And um, that are young now. But if something like this would escalate, go on for fucking who knows how long. Right. Uh, just scary shit. That's all. Yeah, it is. It it's, is. Uh, it's. Hmm. And it's and it's all over. It's all because this guy is like it's it's really just comes down. I mean, it, all wars are usually about this anyway. It's about resources, taking resources from other yeah. countries, using it, but it's a it's like a trade route right what is it it's like uh isn't there like a like an oil route or something that that's like i said that's why it was weird that tillerson who was put into uh as trump's uh what was he he was like, his, like secretary of state i think yeah, well far it was like the foreign stuff right like, yeah 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 that's secretary of state okay yeah and it was odd because it was like he would lobby obama this guy to like open access for Putin for yeah. for him to make more money. I, it, it's just, I don't know. All right, well, let's let end on something kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, the Trump Truth Social. Yeah. <laughs> That's been, the, it was basically a Twitter clone. <laughs> um, uh, from what I understand, it launched, but no one's been on it yet. Everyone's kind of gotten a a place in line i think it crashed a few times and it will they're hoping to get it up in early march uh someone today posted something i don't know if it was true or not but basically one of the one of the first rules on truth social is that you cannot make fun of trump like that's literally a rule oh that's like really funny and it was they they frame it in like you can't bad mouth the app or the owners of the app, and huh. Trump is an owner of the app, uh, and it's just—I don't know—it's just you can't even make this shit up. You know, what I mean, it's, yeah. Wow, I can just feel the freedom flowing through in that app. Like, oh, I mean, oh this is an app that you could. I mean, this is what these guys do. This grip. Like, this is like the seventh right-wing Twitter that's come out in the past like couple of years now. It's. They sell it as they say it's freedom, but really what it is, it's saying, hey, racist trolls, yeah. you can come here and say all the horrible racist, homophobic, xenophobic, anti-Semitic, transphobic shit on here, and we won't stop it. And then the joke is they do because they have to. Right, because they're liable. Because they, they they're liable and it's a functioning app and the app store will, so will be like, we'll kick these out. No one will be able to download it. We're not going to, you know, like. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is that no one wants to host like basically a hate speech haven, you know, or a, a planning mechanism for well, they don't now. They did for you. Like, I don't know if you've ever been on Twitter like five, six years ago. Mm, true. It's supposed to be like a different animal, but you know, things change and yeah. Enough people came out and said, hey, and there was enough lawsuits involved. And like you said, they don't want to be held liable. So they do this grift all the time. Did you ever heard of the Freedom Phone? No. Oh, God. There was like this young guy. I forgot his name. I got to, let me see if I can look it up. The Freedom yeah, yeah. Phone. It was the funniest thing. I've seen like a couple people talk about it. Basically, it was this thing sold to, uh, again, another kind of like the right wing thing where it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm on the website. Buy, buy the Freedom Phone. Look at oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the Green Bell now. Yeah, and it's like we'll the have Liberty apps. Bell. That, we'll have <laughs> we'll have <laughs> apps on there that uh, won't um, are not available because they've been deemed, you know, right. yes. have the free speech and everything. And it's like, and then the the joke is, let me see if I can find the guy's name. Like he was some like, of course he's some crypto creep, crypto right. coin pushing weirdo. This like young guy who's like libertarian or whatever, and he's pushing it. But the joke is, is the phone is just a repackaged Alibaba phone, <laughs> like one of those like, yeah. like 
And the funny thing, the farce about those phones is that they're notorious for being hacked like right. easily. So all these nitwits are gonna buy this phone. One, again, it's literally just, yeah, it said actually budget, MAGA World's Freedom Phone, actually budget Chinese phone. Mm. So they're buying a bunch of cheap ass phones. They're putting a new label on it and they're selling it to these morons for like probably 20 times the cost. On brand. Yep. That's <laughs> the, it's like the grift. So of course, Trump finally getting a social media app is like the ultimate of the grift because yeah. he was kicked off of Twitter. But again, the funniest thing about the whole thing is that he's he made it look like Twitter. <laughs> yeah. He's he yeah. Uh, he would sell his soul to get back on Twitter. That is nothing will ever haunt him more. Yeah, I think he's probably more angry about being kicked off Twitter than losing the presidency. Yeah. Oh, totally. Frankly. Well, because yeah. if he was on Twitter, he'd be allowed to at least go on and complain about how the pre- he would yeah. just keep pushing conspiracies of that he you know really won and he would just constantly put out shit retweet out all yeah. shit articles it would be unchecked and yeah um yeah i guess we'll see what happens in that but yeah. speaking of, uh real quick before we wrap this up did finish that anna show oh yeah I... russians <laughs> now i get out of the way i want to let people know i am russian uh like i have like i don't know what i am i'm russian ukrainian so i'm in oh, conflict okay. with myself right? yeah right i am well, uh, constantly trying not to uh, <laughs> <laughs> gross. um i thought inventing anna was great i mean it's not life-changing it's not high art uh but man what a great what a fun show you know it was, it was yeah. a weird show um, she was great in it the lead julia garner yeah, I always like wonder. I mean, I know a lot of the stuff was like bullshit they said, but there's some truth to it. I do find it interesting though. Like in the end, they kind of showed who the real people, what they looked like. Yeah. And I found it interesting that they didn't show her in the end though. They didn't yeah, show the that girl was weird. Her. Yeah, I mean, you could find it online. There's like tons of pictures of her. Um, but it's kind of funny. Like this, the I don't know. It, it's kind of going a little long this one, so I don't know if I want to go into it too much. But like. Like we talked about it, and you said that like everyone's kind of horrible on the show. Like yeah, everyone. there are no no good characters. I mean, like no no heroes. They're all shitty people. Well, yeah, the main protagonists and everything. Like like even like her like the one friend, the trainer. Like you know, she tries to like act like she's like above it, and like she's the one who leaves the Morocco trip mm-hmm. role and you know, that. But you know, she still participates in all these things. You know, she's yeah. trying to like. She was trying to make herself like remove herself uh, and make herself more like a unwilling, unwittingly uh, victim of the whole thing. Yeah. Like she knew she was friends with this person. She knew what she was getting into. And it was interesting that one friend who worked in the hotel, she had a different, like yeah. she had a very positive and like Anna paid her back. It was only like 1400 bucks or whatever. Right. She was able to come up with that kind of money easily uh, with whatever grift she was doing. But like, she didn't go on that trip in Morocco, so she didn't have that like negative, like right. negative thing. But then they they try to paint that one woman out to be like the victim, the one who gave the company card and she was stuck with like a sixty five thousand dollar bill. Yeah, yeah. But, like Rachel. They, yeah, they made a point and brought up the one friend's like, you went on the trip assuming that the, that you used Anna. You assumed that she was gonna pay. Yeah. This <laughs> entire thing off, and you had no problem with that, like. You're not the he- the hero here. It was, I think maybe that's one of the things I liked about it is that like, it was a lot of shades of gray. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think any of them were good people, but like, it was a lot of shades of gray. And the, the lawyer, the, the, uh, the kind of the my cousin Vinny lawyer type of guy yeah. was like, basically that was his whole defense. It's like, look, it's 2021 or whatever year it was. And everyone's all, we all lie. We all lie to some extent and we all, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, she was able to sell herself as yeah. uh, this thing and people were willing to give her money for it. I mean, like. It was weird though, because she kept saying at the end she was so close, but she was never close. 
Peter. No, it would always be uh, the grift would move on to something. It was like what they call it, like robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. She would always be like behind on something because she, you know, and she had this stupid expensive taste. And it's yeah. like, you know, uh, it, yeah, she was so close to what? Like, even right. like what that's that, it. That, um, that supposed loan for this thing she was going to do. They needed yeah. all this proof of stuff that she wouldn't be able to deliver. She'd never be able to deliver. And also, like, the whole thing that she was doing was, like, a foundation. Like, for what? You know, yeah. Like, I mean, what would it generate? What would it, it had no point. I had, than... This reminds me of this guy I got hit up to do. I think I sent it to you. Let me see if I still have the photos. It's the most insane. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. I don't even know if I want to read it straight, but... This guy hits me up and he wants me to do like toys and stuff, artwork on my toys and everything. He wants to make a 3D model. And I, I know where this is going now. Yeah. Anytime someone hits you up and wants to make a 3D model, they want to make an NFT. Right. Because the big, the big thing for NFTs is uh, a lot of like 3D CGI looking art has become, you know, we see all the board apes and all that crap, but then there's a big thing for like people who do CGI and like yes. 3D modeling. And I said to the guy, no NFTs, no way. Right. And he's like. You want to like bring the world together or something? Like, oh, bullshit. Like I said, I don't do NFTs. He's like, open your mind. We take money from idiots with too much. <laughs> we give the most valuable ones connected to the toys to the people it was designed for. They will all uh, only and rarest valuable ones. That's how we instantly lift them up by using those idiots money. Think about it. Like. It's like this bullshit. It's like, dude, you just want to yeah. sell an NFT and make a bunch of money. You're not doing any of this altruistic shit. Fucking like, butterfly. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, right? <laughs> You're not from the peacemaker. You're the golf butterfly, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, get the fuck out of here. Altruistic bullshit. Like, Twitter handle wanna... is golf butterfly. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just want to, like, uh, you want me to make you some fucking... Yeah shitty nfts so you can get a quick buck and then probably screw me over probably yeah i probably would get screwed in the, <laughs> on the equation because then i would like not be i would be removed or you know i would not get the nft who the fuck knows but yeah. like yeah i'm gonna create this rec center and all be because these nfts well, it ain't you fucking piece of shit mm. you're gonna make like a quick buck you're gonna invest in another crypto and you're gonna like fucking lose the money or do something stupid with it <laughs> the fuck out of here all these people are like oh i'm gonna do this this and that i'm like watching some like twitch streamer who gets like constant donations and he claimed that he was gonna do like he was gonna make like a super pack with it and do all this like to push the leftist agenda bullshit i don't know yeah. you're gonna fucking just get a nice car you buy a nice house <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, you work, you did it, good job. People are willing to give you the money, but don't don't try to pull that. Yeah. Picture. You know, like, oh, this is to benefit uh, abused women. No, it's not. No, yeah. no, it's not. They'll just never see benefit your, your pocketbook. It, 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 you just want to make. I mean, right off the bat, you already lost me. You said you want to make an NFT. I mean, I, I do appreciate the honesty that the person. Had oh there. yeah, no, that's. Said, I want to trick idiots, and I was like, all right, well, at least you're being. <laughs> Like, I don't want to do that because I don't want to participate in that. Sure. But I do find there is a, I'm sure that Anna woman uh, is probably very, ups would definitely be in the digital NFT market. Yeah, probably. for sure. Holy. Oh, <laughs> she would, she would probably, that's probably where she would probably do really well. Yeah. And would be able to legit get some real legit scams going. I found it funny though. Well, one, there's that dinner she has and that Martin Scarelli, someone playing Martin Scarelli yeah, yeah. there, the, uh, the fucking farmer bro. bro. Did you notice, though, the charges that, we'll wrap this up right now, the charges that she has against her? The um, Did you notice, though, what she went to jail for? It was like, like the stuff, the, the thing with that Rachel girl was like not guilty. Yeah, right. right. And then there was like some other like personal thing, not guilty, right? It was but, for the banks, yeah. Like all the banks, yeah. yeah. That's you cannot. That's no, not. That's what happened to Screlly too. Yeah, it was the he. It was banks or whatever. I find that really funny. It's like yeah. 
Man, if only Kyle Rittenhouse shot a banker. Shot a bank. Shot, just shot a bank. Shot, shot a bank <laughs> yeah. from like an ATM machine or something. Right. He'd be like, Probably still be in jail, yeah. He'd be rotting in prison forever. Ugh. He wouldn't be on Tucker Carlson. He'd be... No, that's for sure. Uh, on... Uh, his butt would be called Pucker Carlson. <laughs> <And his butt. laughs> oh, shit. All right. Well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing, nothing to end the, the podcast on a good old prison rape joke. Yes, right. <laughs> nothing, uh, you know. <laughs> calms the nerves the, the post-world war three nerves pre yeah the potential uh, t- so you know it's interesting real quick i watched the kingsman the oh yeah yeah the prequel it's like it's okay but it begins the, with the guy trying to protect the uh guy who gets assassinated it starts world war one um, oh archduke ferdinand yeah yeah um, he did not do a good job saving no. him. So, <laughs> um, so it just makes me think of that. I don't know yeah. the Archduke of Ferdinand, the equivalent of that is today. Um, Hope we don't find out. Uh, Ted Cruz. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But there would be no war. No war would start. It would no, just be like, oh. would just go, right? <laughs> or peace now. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like the opposite effect. <laughs> Right. <laughs> People just like they're just so turned off of war. Not Enjoy because I'm like, what? No, not Enjoy even like hands. for not even no, not even for like peace reasons. Just like like because Ted Cruz is so repulsive and like they're just like <sighs> like it has nothing to do with like doves or peace. It's more right, right. Like coming completely disinterested in the concept <laughs> of war. More ambivalence than anything yeah, else. Yeah. There you go. Like, <laughs> all right. Well, on that note. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. And you still going on about that. Thank you for listening to You Still Going On About That. Um, please like, comment, share. And if you haven't done already, please follow us on Instagram, YSGO, Facebook, YSGO, and Twitter, YSGO. Thank you. And have a great day.